Okay, we are live, we're live. This is your host, uh, Guy Nollywood Jr. And I represent the RBG Nation. As you can see, we have uh, uh, some brothers on here. Uh, I got my brother Craig. But uh, this is gonna be an interesting debate between my two brothers, uh, Talik, Angel Snuff Snuff Snevin, and my brother, Maurice. And uh, today's topic is the Black Civil War, the fight for Mississippi. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let these guys, uh, well, I know I already introduced them, but I want, you know, they can introduce themselves again, but I'm going to let them tell them what they're going to do. They're going to introduce themselves again, and then they're going to um, give their a brief uh, five-minute introduction of their argument. And, and uh, so, um, okay, let's, let's get the ball rolling. Uh, uh, Craig. Yeah, what's going on, bro? Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna. You can set the timer. You just started, man. I remember I said to um introduce like the rules and stuff like that. Give oh, me oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad, my bad, my bad. Sorry about that. Um. Now the rules are this, right? Um. Each individual will have thirty minutes to stake their argument. Um. And then th that's like the first round. And then the second round is another 30 minutes of, of, of each individual. And then um, then, the, then the third round, they will engage each other uh, face to face. Um, of course, there will be no, uh, it, it's, it's all about attacking the information. There will be no, uh, dissing each other as, as far as personal uh, dissing, anything personal. So it's, it'll be just be attacking the information. So, um, so okay. So Craig, are you ready? Well, uh, okay. Um, do you have that link, brother? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, indeed. So you, yeah. Yep. I'm definitely ready. Just let me know when to press that. Um. Um. That okay. You can okay. All right. So, brother, uh, we're going to go with my brother, Talik. So, Talik, uh, just introduce yourself and state, um, you know, your introduction of your argument. Okay, Craig, you ready? You got five minutes. All right. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, brother Guy. Guy and uh, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, Talik. Yo, you right. timed it, Craig? Yeah, everything's good, bro. Okay, all right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Brother Tully. All right. As always, in the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always. Um, I thank uh, everyone for joining us this uh, afternoon for what should be a very interesting uh, gathering, this discussion. Um, the topic that is chosen is, of course, um, this Mississippi campaign. I myself, being one of the co-founders of that campaign, Angel Snuffin' Up 7, and this platform that I call the Realities Temple on Earth, myself and, and those who uh, were with me uh, March the 25th, when I officially uh, began to uh, present this to the world, to the public, myself and my assistant, Brother Talib, one night we sat and was just talking on the phone and we were saying if uh, we had real leadership, what could be done and just tossing some ideas around, we came up with what we now, or what was what soon be called simply uh, the Mississippi campaign. Prior to us, there was nobody uh, on YouTube speaking about Mississippi or caring about anything about Mississippi. And then because it was to become a national effort, we reached out and sent a certified letter to what many of you know of as the, the minister 
Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan. Since that time, uh, we've had people, um, you know, come and go and and so forth. And then, unfortunately, we've had the the problem of our concept being taken out of context and made into something that it is not. So I'm here to clarify exactly who the founders of the Mississippi campaign is, the originators of the Mississippi campaign is, and make clear the position of what that original concept is. Anything other than that, and is being called a Mississippi campaign, is not us. So we don't want to be associated with those things that that concept does not uh, represent. And we should have that right because we are the originators. We are the creators of that concept. I should not even be here today debating on something that I created. But unfortunately, that's how it goes. In cyberspace, you have those who take ideas and from others and they use those for to enrich themselves or for some unknown agenda. So that's what we're here today to clarify. Also, I think if time permits, we also want to speak about perhaps uh, the relationship or the accusations by the Nation of Islam against Brother Malcolm X, of whom they call a traitor and a hypocrite and all these different things. And the Nation of Islam has made these allegations against a man who is not here to defend himself. So since I am here and I understand Malcolm's position, then I will attempt to bring more clarification and defend this brother called Malcolm X. And that's simply what I'm here to uh, to do. With that said, that's the end of that, uh, my introduction. Yes, sir, yes, indeed. Let me restart it. So, brother, um, Arise can go. All right, peace and blessings, family. Assalamu alaikum. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. Thank you, everybody. Let me start it first, hold up. Mm -hmm. Get it going. Let me know when you're ready to go on the clock. I need uh, to communicate that with me and if you ever need to know like how much time you got left you know just ask but okay. when you are ready let me know i'm ready you're right okay we're going all right um assalamu alaikum peace and blessings family uh thank you brother guy for hosting this um fireside chat today uh again my name is brother maurice muhammad everybody knows me i'm the director of the initiative uh, and this debate, uh, the Black Civil War, the battle for Mississippi, we are at a time in our existence where the leadership of yesterday is gone. Um, the mm. only one that we have around mm. still is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And um, so really the ball is in our court. And because the ball is in our court, we have to make decisive decisions on where we're going to go as a people. Now, there has never been a movement in history where all the people agree on what needs to happen. But there has always been a committed few that led the rest or took the rest where things need to go. Now, this idea of taking over a state, I'm not the originator of that thought. Um, I think if, if you go back and you look in the Nation of Islam, you see the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that we should have seven states. And um, if you go back and you read more about it, and he talks about which are these seven mm -hmm. states. Um, but the one who got this part rolling in my head is uh, Talik Ibn Ra. He did reach out to me and he asked me about it and I said, excellent, let's do it. Um, so that is how this thing started. Um, but at the end of the day, there's a decision that has to be made. Are we going to follow the rainbow push or are we going to follow our own way? 
the way that we know what's right. So in this battle, because this is a battle, this is a battle for the hearts and minds of our people. And um, I believe that separation and living a life that is the life that we should live, it is the best way. And we're not gonna compromise on that for nobody. So again, my name is Maurice Muhammad, director of the initiative and the leader of the Mississippi campaign that we're taking over a city, a county, and eventually a state. And I rest my mic. All right, perfect, perfect. Now, I guess um, let the battle begins. So, um, Craig, you got to set up for 30 minutes. Okay. Who do we begin with? Uh, so, okay. So right now we'll let Brother Talik to uh, start his uh, argument. You got 30, you got 30 minutes. And whenever you're ready, just let us know. Okay. And, we, and our Brother Craig, we'll start the time. I'm ready. Okay, we're on. Okay. All right, let's get this party started. So in his introduction, and I guess there will be, and I should have no problem and should not even have to discuss that, of course, that this platform is the originator of the Mississippi campaign that I was forced to change to Operation Exodus Mississippi. I should not even have to be here. I should not have to be here at all. The channel that I come to, this channel, Guy Nollywood Jr. channel, I should not even be here. The man, Guy Nollywood Jr., and I'm not going off the subject, but I'm trying to make a point here. I should not even be here because this person, when we talk about seeking neutral ground, we could not come to my channel because I was told that's not neutral ground. But we come to this channel, but it's not neutral ground for me. It's not neutral ground for me because this channel actually made two, not one, but two videos bashing me. Two disc videos. And why was this done? Did I do anything to this person? No, I did not. I only stated my opinion. That's all I've done. I did not talk about your mother. Did not talk about your dog. I did not do any of these different things. But out of emotion, but I'm here. I should not even be here. If I had that, that state of mind, I would not be here because I was attacked for no reason. And this would be a hostile environment. Also, the same person, because of emotion, asked me to remove videos out of this emotion. But I come here in a hostile environment. In the meantime, this brother Maurice Muhammad steals my concept. He tells you all right that it belongs here. He steals my concept, this brother, to change it to, sit, to fit an agenda that I don't know nothing about. And then this week or last week, he calls my mother out of her name more emotion and threatens me with bodily harm. I should not even be here. I should not even be here in this hostile environment. This is not no brotherhood. Brothers don't steal. Brothers don't make diss videos out of emotion. Brothers talk with one another. Brothers, as they say from Public Enemy, brothers learn how to work it out. Brother Maurice told me don't come on his page, but he's all over my page speaking and agreeing with some faceless troll calling me a homosexual, that I had homosexual tendency. I should not even be here. You understand? But I'm here. And why am I here? I am here because I, even though I don't say that I believe in God, because I do follow the example of this man called Christ. And Christ, was very merciful, a very compassionate person. So I tolerate this. 
I tolerate this activity from these brothers out of love. That's why I'm here. Because if I had their mindset, I would not be here at all. I understand that our people are mentally disturbed, mentally ill, have a problem. So I can look over that for the benefit of the good. Unlike racists who cause us harm on purpose, when a person is mentally disturbed, they are not responsible for their actions. So I can tolerate that because sometimes we do things and we really don't mean it, but we become so emotional. I don't understand that about black men nowadays. Why are we so emotional? I've done nothing personally to these brothers, but I'm here in this hostile environment. You have brother Maurice Muhammad who called my mother out of her name. No apology to me, I'm here. No apology. Why would you do that? Why would that come out of your mouth? When we become angry, you know, we let things fly. No apology to me. I did not do anything to you. You're the thief. You stole. I have the right to speak out for that which was stolen from me. I don't. Are you saying I don't? And the sad, sick thing about it is you have people who actually support that behavior of Brother Maurice. Can we call him a brother? How do you feel, Brother Maurice? You're going to threaten a 55-year-old senior citizen and these, chin, these cheerleaders, these people are actually egging you on. Then you go on, and I want, to, I want to see this today. Then you say, after that, you make a claim that I call the law enforcement on you. I want to see this evidence today because I know what I didn't do, which I don't have no problem with that. When somebody threatening your life and the nation of Islam has a history of murdering black folks. Me personally, I've been threatened two times. So I take all threats from the nation of Islam very seriously. They will kill black folks. They may not bother the races, but they will kill black folks. So I will call the police, I will call the Navy, the Army, the Marines, whoever is necessary. That's not no problem for me because it don't make no sense <laughs> because it makes no sense for you to try to be some type of hero laying up in the moor. Had brother Malcolm X, really embrace law enforcement or those criminal elements that were saying, look, we can handle those Muslims for you. Perhaps Brother Michael would be here today and some other folks would have been laying on the slab. Now, this Mississippi campaign, it's ours. It has nothing to do. I would explain, it's very simple. Operation Exodus Mississippi is very simple. A national effort. I never said nothing about a city. Never said nothing about a city. And the reason why I skipped the city is because we need something on a large scale to get back into the swing of things, into this race war, may you say. A little school here, a little business now and then, that's nice, beautiful, but you need something on a large scale that everybody can participate in, all our people, has nothing to do, I don't care about your sexual orientation. I don't care who you married to. I don't care if you're a crack addict. We can find something for you to do. I don't care about those different things. It has nothing to do with that. Trying to put our people in a position so that that state can benefit you, so that you can go to Mississippi and feel safe, a sanctuary for us, and grow that impoverished state from one of poverty to a place, to a state where it can be an example for the whole world. That's what Mrs. The, the uh, Mississippi campaign is about. And if you do these things correctly, and you're not going to ostracize nobody, if you understand what needs to be done, this is a process where you begin and you will not even begin, those of us living today won't even see the end. 
But all these detrimental things that you talk about, they will fade away. Well, according to scriptures, they should, because if you are righteous life and you, you encourage, don't force the people into a righteous life. Don't make them, don't tell them, I will kill you. We gonna kill the homosexual. See, this is the rhetoric that's coming from the, the Maurice Muhammad camp. They talking about murdering folks and ostracizing people and treating them. Who are you? I'm not in a position, I'm not in a position to judge you. What the scripture said, judge not, at least you be judged. Now, if you're going to do that, and this is dangerous, but if you're going to do that, then be fair. Brother Maurice likes to, as y'all know, he likes to use a little profanity. That could be considered detrimental behavior by many. It's detrimental behavior for us, I'm concerned. So let's pick a punishment for Brother Maurice. Let's chop his head off for it. That's what you want to do to homosexuals. You want to kill them, stone them to death. And if you marry a white man or a white woman, uh, you know, that's bad too. There's brothers who want to get drunk. I just drink socially, you say. But see, I don't drink at all. So I see your drinking as detrimental. And I think that we should, uh, you should get whipped with a lash for 20. Every time we catch you drinking, you should get whipped with a lash. When you have that type of behavior, that type of mentality, it opens up the door to what's next. Now, at the same time, you do not want homosexual in your, which the Mississippi campaign has nothing to do with those things, how you live your life. The Mississippi campaign has nothing to do with how you live your life. I don't know how this even came about. Oh, I know because somebody stole the idea and they began to say that the Mississippi campaign represents this. I don't care. I just want you to be free. You don't need another slave master. You don't need somebody telling you what to do. You need somebody to suggest and advise. And if you want to do that, then you can do that. Not by force. Nothing should be done by force. Well, you've been killing some homosexuals. I remember in the 80s, they were really killing some homosexuals pretty bad. Every time you turn around, gays and lesbians was getting murdered in the 80s. It's still here. Now they are all over the place, stronger than ever. And a lot of these other, they wanted to stop people from drinking, still drinking, all these detrimental behaviors. See, because when you look at somebody like Maurice Muhammad and others, they only understand the symptom, but they don't deal with the cause. And they also want to make sure they are not part of the punishment because they are high and mighty and self-righteous. They can judge others. Now, mind you, no homosexuals, mind you, no interracial couples, but they didn't say, but, but you can be a murderer and come into their new reality. You can be guilty of incest and come into their new reality. You can be a stone cold drunk and come into their reality. You can be all these different things and come into their, into their reality. Because there's no way in this day and time you're going to have a holier than thou self. That's, that's, Fantasy thinking. You're gonna have something detrimental among you. You cannot do, you can't, you can't stop that. But that's not what the original concept of the Mississippi campaign was about. It was simply about using your vote, which we are already in a position in that state anyway to, um, to do. Use your vote to take control of these seats, the political system and the law, so you can change them so they would benefit you. No more, no less. Take advantage of that. You can set up the school system not to teach your children all these different religions and African spirituality. Teach them skills that they can use. As a state, you are in a position to, to, cause, to cause international trade. If you like Africa, you can trade with Africa or China or whatever because each state can operate on its own. And they do. There's a lot of things that you could do once you take those, those uh, the, the laws. Taking control of the laws does not mean that you are in people's business. I don't care who you sleep with. I don't care who you marry. I don't care if you smoke a crack. I don't care about that stuff. That's a societal thing. And it's happening all over the country. 
But what must be done first, it's a process. What must be done first is to put yourself in, in a position where you can influence those type of behaviors to show better because you are in control. You are not in control being out here just doing anything in this society. So the Mississippi campaign has nothing to do with your personal choice, how you live your life. You're not going to go to the city. You're not going to go to a state. You're barely going to be able to get these people to change the laws and take over the political system. You're going to barely be able to do that, let alone talk about going to that house where you married to a Caucasian, you, you are a homosexual, you got to get out of here. That's not going to happen. You're not going to happen. But it goes back again. I have the right to speak for what I, I myself, and my assistant, we created. And it should not be tarnished with this rhetoric that we don't have nothing to do with. It's not part of the concept. A rhetoric, disrespect to a brother. This brother here is supposed to be an FOI. Do you understand, Brother Maurice? I'm a, I was an FOI. That makes me a veteran. This is how you talk and treat a veteran. Where were you in the street? I was on the streets of New York, across the street, when you had the Anti-Defamation League. What was they saying? How do you want Farrakhan? How do you want them dead? I was there getting ready to bang with these devils over Mr. Farrakhan. I was there. You may not never have even met the man. I was there standing right in front of them, willing to take a bullet. And this is how you're going to treat me. I'm a veteran FOI. I'm your elder. And this is how you treat me. You're going to steal from me, talk about you're going to kick my ass, call my mother out of her name. Really? Really? And people are stupid enough, they're actually going to follow somebody with this type of mentality, this mindset. Are you serious? When you become nothing, Brother Maurice, you become nothing but a common thief. You're a common thief. You're a deceiver. Why would you steal? You come in another brother's house and you steal from him. That's not Nation of Islam teachings. You want for your brother what you want for yourself. So that means it's good for me to come to your house and steal something from you. Is that what you're telling the people that it's all right to be a brother thief? Is that what you're saying? Is this what you're representing? I earned the right to talk about Farrakhan because I was willing to take a bullet for him. I was willing to take a bullet for him for almost nine years. I cut the grass for the Nation of Islam. I sold bean pie. Do you know what the Nation of Islam does for me? I slept on pickle barrels. That's what I, that's what the nation of, of Islam done for me. They gave me rejected bean pies to eat. That's what the nation of Islam done for me. There was no benefit being in the nation of Islam to me or my community. I can go to my community. You will not find one person that can say the nation of Islam, they benefit. Nobody. I have the right. I earned the right to talk about Louis Farrakhan. I was with Louis Farrakhan when he didn't have fancy suits. He didn't have a pot to piss in. He was poor broke. I am the reason why you can, you exist right now, what I've done. And you have no respect for that because you angry and you upset and you mad. Well, let me tell you something, brother. You need to be a brother today and stop being so damn arrogant. The only thing you have to do, brother Maurice, it's just change your name. Don't perpetrate as some Mississippi campaign because you know that's not you. Do the brotherly thing and just squash it, let it go. It belongs to, it don't make no difference. Well, you changed the name. It don't make no difference. That's still my concept. The concept that belongs to the reality is temple on earth. It don't belong to you. I don't advocate hurting people, our people. I don't care what they're crackhead or prostitute homosexual, married to whoever, I don't care, I don't hurt our people. They already been hurt enough. I'm not going to continue to, I'm not, I'm not interested in being a slave master, a dictator. 
I'm not interested in that. I want to show our people love and be nice. And show them a way and ask them, not tell them. I want to ask you. This is how you should do it. This is how we, what we need to do. They don't need no, bar, no, no more people to keep beating them. I'm going to kill you because you're homosexual. Who the hell are you to judge anybody? With your self-righteous ass. You should be shaming of yourself. Master Farad Muhammad came to North America, according to the teachings, willing to climb a mountain 40, 40 miles high to save one of us. What if, that, what if that us was married to a white woman? Matter of fact, at least you forget that Master Farad Muhammad, his mother was a white woman. Your God is a product of a interracial relationship. That's a fact. Your minister Farrakhan, his daughter-in-law, his is white. He have half biracial children, grandchildren. This is a fact. So your God and Minister Farrakhan would not be allowed to enter your new reality, which is not a new reality. Those things already exist right now to this day, and they don't work. I'm not going to beat our people. Our people deserve love, understanding. That's If you say that our people are mentally ill and sick, you don't beat sick people. You don't mistreat people because they're sick. Go to a hospital and the nurse is kind, a competent one. She's kind and she's loving and she smiles. Even if the patient throw up on her and puke on her, like what the, she's still nice because the man, the, the man or the woman or the child is sick. So I don't want to beat up my, my people. I want to do something that includes all of us. And if you understand, stop dealing with the symptom and deal with the cause of detrimental behavior, then you can understand where I'm coming from. Because just like our brother uh, at Minister of Information, Craig, said, you, you, you kill a tree, you kill a, a weed by dealing with the root. Knocking off the leaves and the branches don't mean nothing. The only thing that's going to happen is going to keep coming back up. So you still have homosexuality and you have drunkenness and you have pedophilia. You have all these different things because we're not dealing with the cause. We're not dealing with the root. And this operation, Exodus, Mississippi, that's what we want to deal with. In love, in love and understanding, being a doctor with the right anesthesia. I'm not out here to hurt nobody. I want what is good for all our people because they all deserve liberation. They all deserve justice, freedom, and equality. All of them, because they, they all are descendants of slaves. You all, you all of us deserve that. You are not in a position to tell them just because they are homosexual or married to a white woman or a white man or whoever they married to, that they don't deserve that. You're not in that position. In your little clique, you don't represent black folks. You represent your group, your clique. I'm trying to and asking, not telling, I'm asking our people, this is what needs to be done so that we can do better. We can do better. Help in this effort to give ourselves an advantage and give us some power. Your little city, even if you were successful, don't bring no power. That's just something for you and your little clique to enjoy, to masturbate on. That's all. It's not gonna do nothing for the people. These of, of whom I call the people of soul born in America. It's not gonna help us as a people. It's already been done, been there, done that. We need something that all, Every man, woman, and child can participate in, and when we are successful, they can say, we done it, not a group, but we done it as a people. There are no followers here. Nobody follows me. Those who come to the reality is temple are free thinkers in their minds, and we are a team. Everybody don't agree with what I say or how I think. And that's fine. We don't care. Ain't nobody going to get emotional. Oh, wee, 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 wee. you're not an African. Wee, wee. You're not a Muslim. Wee, wee, wee. Nobody got time for that stuff. We want to be liberated from an oppressor once and for all. And again, if you have any kind of conscience in your heart, it's just simple. You don't even have to argue. You don't have to debate. Keep doing what you're doing. Just let that, just stop calling it the Mississippi campaign because that's not, you don't represent that and you know it. 
you put in work. No, you did not put in work. Not for the Mississippi campaign. Because our work is not about ostracizing our people. That's not the kind of work we're about. We are about all and what is in the best interest of all of us. Not just a, my clique. There's personal things that I would like, but that's not, I'm not interested in my personal desires. What you represent is a personal desire, what you want, influenced by your religion. It's influenced by your religion. Whether you say it is or not, it is. It's influenced by your religion and FOI teachings and things of this nature. So you want to pick and choose what is detrimental behavior, but none of your detrimental behavior, and you got it, because all of us are born in this cesspool. You got some detrimental behaviors too, but you don't want to put that on the chopping block, but you want to condemn others. You are homosexual. And you're like, they so disgusting. Are you dis? You mean to tell me you don't think that you're disgusting? When you put pro all profanity and what you got from your slave master, you do know that, don't you? You don't like white folk, but you love profanity. Mother this and bitch and all these words you use. That came from your slave master. Ain't no African taught you those words. But you don't like white folks. But you want to keep some things. Some of the things that you get from Caucasian people you like, like that profanity. And probably a McDonald's cheeseburger. You, you probably like that too. So <laughs> you should be shaming yourself. You should really should be shaming yourself to go in that direction. And there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with doing what you want to do. But do that. But don't do it under a concept that I created. Myself and Brother Talib. A concept, yes, sir. A concept that comes from this platform. That's where it comes from. At least you acknowledge that. Because I remember at one time we was talking and you told me, well, brother, I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to have to leave without you. And then it even got to the point where you said, you said, well, well, brother, I might not even give you any credit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, you, you, you're going to steal somebody's work, somebody's concept, somebody's idea, and you're going to tell them, uh, I'm just going to leave you behind. Wow. You know, and then you're going to, then you're going to tell me, um, <laughs> you're going to tell me, uh, might not even give you no credit. If, if this is how you're going to act, brother, I'm not even going to give you any credit. <laughs> I have to laugh on that one, boy. Yeah. I'm not even going to give you any credit. That's a lot of what they said, balls. Wow. This is brother. This, this, this is how brothers treat each other. Look, if this is how brothers treat each other, I don't want nothing to do with it. And if we understood exactly how the black man was created, I'm not talking about no Elijah Muhammad spaceship stuff. Oh, by the way, brother Maurice, where is that mother plane at? That mothership? Been 80 years. That boy ain't showed up yet. Supposed to fly down and save the black folks or whatever. Oh, they got little Maurice. He's going to the spaceship. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean to make my. I'm sorry. That's all. That's way out. That's that's a, that's a, that's a low blow, ain't it? But you know, calling my mother B is a low blow. You know, talking about kicking my ass, that's a low blow, ain't it? That's a low blow, right? Yeah, yes, it's a low blow. So uh, I'll tell you something else. Well, I say that because it's a that's about the nation of Islam. We don't need to talk about the nation of Islam. We want to talk about the battle for Mississippi. We can do this. And see, you need to be patient because you can get exactly what you're talking about. You may not live to see it, but you can get exactly what you're talking about. And it won't hurt nobody. I have a sister, a soul sister that, uh, named Ann, and she's involved in an interracial relationship. I love that sister. I, I like her a lot. I'm not supposed to like my sister because she married to somebody outside of her race. Who am I to judge? I don't know. If it wasn't for being introduced to Elijah Muhammad's teaching, I might be married to a Caucasian woman right now. I don't know. People have the right to love. I'm not in a position to tell you you can't love so-and-so. I'm not in a position. There are people who have been molested as a child 
and they end up being homosexual. There's reasons people don't do things for no reason. And you want to kill them because they because of something that's out of their control. But when you do something, whatever you do is all right. All right for you to make threats. Talk about you're going to beat up an old senior citizen. It's all, that's all right for you to do that. And talking about somebody's mama and, and, and cuss and holler and scream. That's all right for you to do that. And everything you do is, is, is right. What is your motto? You kill the nigga in you. I kill the nigga in me. And our God will prevail or something to that effect. But you a nigga. And you ain't trying. You've been this way since at least 2013. You ain't killed the nigga yet. Because if you killed the nigga, there's no way you can come in my house and sit here and try to justify stealing a concept you know you didn't create. Only a nigga, Brother Maurice, would do that. Am I right or wrong? Invo. They on, they on my side, bro. I'm sorry. They on my side. They on my side. Again, the Mississippi, the original idea, and the video is on YouTube. You can listen to what I said. Has nothing to do with sexual orientation or living. Has nothing to do with creating your own nation or whatever. But from this concept, you can get there. From this concept, you can get there. My time, my brother? That's it. All right, all right. Thank you for listening. Okay, so let me get ready. Let me reset this um, timer for Brother Maurice's presentation. I'll let you know. Just let me know when you're ready. Yes, sir. Just okay, when you're ready for me to push that button, um, Brother Maurice, let me know. I'm ready. You're on. Okay. Um, Brother Guy. Yes, sir. Play the first video, please. Yes, sir. I'm going to screen share right now. Do, uh, do everybody see this? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I'm going to blow it up. <coughs> okay. Can't hear it, bro. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Give me one second. Give me, give me one second. I got my, <laughs> air, I got my earphones on. Hold on. Okay. Let me, let me ride that. I come here today to talk about how I feel. You hear it? Yes, sir. Okay. And I feel like that we are treated differently than other people. And I don't like how we're treated. And just because of our color doesn't mean anything to me. I believe that. You're doing great. Damn. You're doing, you're doing a great job. Don't stop the clock. Do not stop. We are black people and we shouldn't have to feel like this. We shouldn't have to protest because y'all are treating us wrong. We do this because we need to and have rights. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let, let her. Let her talk. Go ahead. I've been born and raised in Charlotte. And I never felt this way till now. And I can't stand how we're treated. And got, it's a shame that our fathers and mothers are killed and we can't even see them anymore. That's right. It's a shame that we have to go to that graveyard and bury them. And we have tears, and we shouldn't have tears. We need our fathers and mothers to be by our side.
All right. Thank you, dear brother. No problem. So I, I wanted to show that video because I want you to understand. When you see our little sister, and first of all, she should not have been in a in that position. Because what that says, that is the failure of us as a people to get what we should get. So we send our children out to give a message that if we handled our business, a child would not have to do that. And you can hear her mother in the background. Well, I'm assuming it's her mother when she yelled out, you better not stop. <clears throat> we have to understand our responsibility in making an environment that is safe, that is productive for our people, for making an environment where our children can be safe. That is, that task is on us to do. And so far we have failed to do that task. Now, as the national director of the initiative, my organization, I'm gonna read to you what our mission statement is. Our mission is simple to build a reality for our people and to conduct war on anybody that comes against what we have decided to build. We must have fertile, we must provide a fertile ground for black people to be able to do for self and by any means necessary, stop the defamation and the dehumanization of black people. Our ultimate process, our ultimate purpose is to secure justice and fair treatment to all of our people and to end forever unjust and unfair discrimination and ridicule of black people throughout the earth. And, and this, I'm gonna send it for Craig to, I mean, for Guy to show it up so that everybody can see it. Um, what we have, we've gone through different phases in our time as a people here under white oppression. We've gone through when we were slaves, we've gone through when we were freed, we've gone through where they switched it and we went back to, we went to Jim Crow and all of the stuff that was done to us all of it that was done. And if you read the enemy's reports that they write in reports, it was done purposefully, purposefully. Now, Andrew Stubb knows number seven. He's a very good comedian. He's a very, very good comedian. And comedians, they have a job and it is to make you laugh. And so during some of his presentation, I was laughing because one, I know the truth. And second, he is an awful liar. Now he says he shouldn't even be on this platform because he did nothing. But this is the same nigga who have said that brother Guy's parents is, uh, no, he said that brother Guy is a mulatto so that, then that means that one of his parents is not black, okay? This is the man who say, I didn't do anything, I didn't do anything. This is the same man that if you go down any of his channels he got, how many videos do he have in the title with my name on there, bringing Maurice Muhammad down the size, Maurice Muhammad having a nervous breakdown, Maurice Muhammad doing this, Maurice Muhammad doing that. And I was looking for the video when he gets on and, and I'm probably most some of y'all have seen it and he's, he's, he's making these gorilla sounds. <laughs> you know, I mean, he's a fucking comedian. 
And he's a good comedian. I'm not going to lie. He's a good comedian. He makes you laugh. Because I laughed my tail off when I saw that video. Now, he accused me of stealing an idea. He said, I stole the concept. Then he said, I changed the concept. Anybody who knows me, you know, I don't like white people. I don't do the, I don't like the swirling. I don't approve of that. I don't approve of the homosexuality. None of that, none of the ills of our people or none of the ills of society do I agree with. Now, am I perfect? No, I'm not perfect. Hell, you watch any of my videos, you will hear a cuss word more than once. Now, I am working on that. Um, I am working on that, and I'm not perfect. <clears throat> but, but what is the idea that I have that we are working on for our people? Because it is true. His idea and my idea are totally two different ideas. They're not the same. The only thing in common that it has is the state of Mississippi. It has seeking power. That's in common. Now, his vision, as he said, is a national thing. And the way he goes about it, whether I agree or not, you don't see any video of me beating down his idea. You don't see it. But you see a lot of videos of him beating down our idea. So what is our idea? Our idea is that we're going to Mississippi. We've picked 10 cities so far. And based on certain data, those 10 cities were gathered. And we believe or we know that we're going to take over one of those cities, eventually all 10, but start with one. We're going to get in the mayor's office. It means one of us will be elected mayor. One of us or more of us will be elected to seats in the city, power seats. So we're going to be on city council and we're going to do a lot of changes. We're going to do a lot of changes. None of this is illegal. All of this is the way that you access control and the way that you access power. Once we secure that city, we will, day one, everybody on the police force between the 911 callers and the actual police officers, everybody's being replaced. They're all getting fired. And we're going to replace them with our own people. Our own people who what? Think like we think, go into those seats. The reason why, because the current thinking of the police departments in the United States of America is not the thinking that we say it should be. So since we're creating a new reality, as I talked into my the mission statement, we have to change things. So everybody in the police being fired and we're gonna replace those people with our people who we've trained to go in there. We'll have our militia, ready to back up our police officers and do other things. Now, when we talk about power, there's certain ways that you use what's already here to gain power. You control a city, you have power. The next step that you have to control from that city is you have to control that county. See, you're not gonna get this by osmosis, you got to do your research and you got to find the weak points and you attack. This is a surgical procedure that we are doing. See, dude, he's not about that. He, he doesn't have the know-how on how to do what he wants to do. So in our reality, yes, there cannot, we don't want to live with white people. And that's all right. And we're going to do that. We don't want to live around swirlers. And that's all right. And we're going to do that. And we don't want to live around homosexuals. And that's all right. And we're going to do that. 
Everybody in America, land of the free, home of the brave, supposedly, but except when it comes to us. Now, I'm no rainbow push nigga, okay? I'm no rainbow push nigga. I'm not a nigga at all. So knowing that, if you bring a concept or an idea to me, automatically you should already think, well, he's not going to want white people, homosexuals, and, and swirlers. He ain't going to want that because he's not about that. His character doesn't embrace that. So you don't invite a person to the party who you know has objections with that. But we're going to prove that when we've talked on video and we did certain videos, that Talek, when it came up about homosexuals and swirlers and white people, he didn't disagree. He went right along with it. He didn't say, stop. I don't approve of that. This ain't about that. He didn't do that. He kept going with it. Now, we're going to also prove in this same video, he going to say something about, well, we're going to go to the mayor. And I said, stop. No, we ain't. We ain't doing that. We're not going to give him advance warning of what we're doing. We're not going to do that. And again, this is on video. So if I hear something that I don't like, that I believe is an error, I deal with it right then and there because that is my duty as a brother. Now, he claimed that he had all of these, you know, quote unquote problems or this, what, and that, but he never brung it up until after I already got the ball rolling and we're rolling. We had a meeting. Lisa Cabrera was there. Uh, brother Me Too was there. Sister Pam was there. Uh, brother Ozzy was there. A private meeting on the initiative conference call line. This man puts the damn thing on YouTube. A private meeting where we're talking about Pacifics of the plan. And he puts the shit out on YouTube to let the enemy know the Pacifics. Because when I talk about the plan on public, I don't give Pacifics. I give general information enough so that you can see where we're going and you can reach out for more information. But on this conference call, we wasn't on no YouTube or nothing. It was on a phone conference call and we're going into Pacifics. And he was, he was recording it and didn't tell none of us that, hey, I'm putting this information out on YouTube as we're speaking live. He didn't tell none of us. That's betrayal number one. Betrayal number one. You want to talk about trust? That's betrayal number one. Betrayal number two is when we were talking about the homosexuals and all that on live, he never said that and said, hey, I don't agree with that. He never said that. He went right along with it. Betrayal number three. We were having a conversation on the live. And when we go back and play it, you will see me and Guy was talking and we were making jokes. And I said, we're not even going to give him a trial. We'll just go ahead and kill him. We were joking. Going back and forth. Talek runs with it and perpetrates this lie. Betrayal number four. He says, y'all want to go out and kill homosexuals. All of this is going to be on video that I'll put forth. I, we never, that's not what we said or what I said. He's taking what I've said out of context and turning it into an evil way. Because what I said was the homosexuals be where the homosexuals at. 
we'll be where we at doing our thing. I said we'll have orientation for those who decided not to go because of whatever their behavior is and they wanted to live it up and do their thing. And when they're tired of doing the nigga shit and they want to come to the heaven that we built, we'll have orientation and they can come in and go through orientation. Now, if a homosexual goes through orientation and you learn our rules that homosexuality is not allowed in our new reality, and you say, okay, I'm not a homosexual and I don't do that, and da, 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 da. Then you come in to our reality and you try to make people homosexual then you have violated our law. Now, if the penalty for that law is death, then death will be carried out. That's not saying we're going hunting them because they're where they are. They let leave them alone. But when you bring that death style into the new reality that we built, that is that doesn't have that that is safe for our children safe for our women safe for our men and you bring that wicked white behavior and you lie to us to corrupt the heaven that we created for ourselves then in my estimation you're worthy of death now The way the laws work will work in the new reality is that we will create them together. I'm not going to sit back and create the laws myself. We are going to do it. That's why I said one law I talked about, I said, you know, you, you get caught driving on a suspended license. Well, in our reality, that's not going to be a law. That you drive on a suspended license, you go to, that's not a law. Because that's bullshit. We don't believe in it. We govern ourselves. We're in positions of power. So since we're in positions of power, we can make laws. And we're going to make the laws that we want to live by. That's advantageous to us. We're not going to care what white people think. Because they don't care when the laws that they make and how it affects us. So we're not going to be them. We're going to be us. We're going to be us. And we're smart enough to know how to get it done. And we're committed enough because we understand that we got to separate. We got to separate from these people. We don't have another decision to make. It's separation or die. And since that is the tone of where we are, I'm not gonna fall down on my duty. No, we've been taught properly. We've had Noble Drew Ali, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, uh, Marcus Mosiah Garvey. I mean, the list go on and on. Chancellor Williams. I mean, the list goes, call it Muhammad. Dr. King, we, we've had enough teachers. We've had enough examples. And it's time for us to take what we've learned and apply it so that we can produce a new reality. Now, we know that when we take this city and we rename it, hell, we may call it a Kibalon or whatever the name we agree, but we're going to rename it. And we're going to, we're going to take down the, the, the plantations that's there. And we're going to do a new way, a new way, our way. White folks do it all the time. They're not better than us. They're not better than us. So you mean to tell me we can't make our own society? Yes, we can. 
And yes, we will. Because that is the proof that you were taught properly. With the last vision that we had of Marcus Mosiah Garvey was on a boat as he was sailing away and the people on the shore tears in their eyes waving we are the inheritors of that vision of marcus mosiah garvey we are the inheritors of the vision of the honorable elijah muhammad he said take Seven states, the enemy ain't going to give it. So we got to take it. And we got to govern our way. Same thing like white folks do. Now, when you have an idea and you have two different ideas, two different concepts, it's not the same idea. So you're inaccurate, you're incorrect when you say, I stole your idea. Because we were working off of my idea. We were work working off of my plan, not yours. You didn't come up with it. I came up with it. I'm the one who put the things in the motion. Now he says, I called his mother out of her name. Play the second video, dear brother. Okay. All right, no problem. This a second. Uh, that video here? Okay. Y'all see that? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. You will put the fight bastard for the enemy. God damn it, you'll never be a man like me. God damn it, I dare you to come meet me. God damn it. I can't stand your rabbit ass. Get the fuck off of my life. You ain't the goddamn man that your own people wanted me to be there so I can defend myself. But your rabbit ass dog, you don't even have the integrity to do that. But you talk about me behind my back, you damn son of a bitch. <coughs> calm down for a minute. I apologize for, for you're not a son of a bitch because your mama's not a bitch. But you, nigga, use a bitch. Use a bitch. Use a weak ass motherfucking cracker lover. God damn it. That you are. All right. Thank you. Right. Now, in the video, everybody see that I said, first, let me say this. I, was, I do a live message every morning on my way to work. And um, this, is, this was, I believe, Monday morning. And Sunday, he or whatever day it was, but he did a video. And like I said, you can go back and look at his chain. He does a lot of videos on me. And I wanted to be able to come and defend myself since you were attacking me. And he wouldn't let me in. But he comes into my live, you know, in the chat thing. And when I saw it, yeah, I was pissed and I went straight off. I just left the whole message of what I was talking about. And yeah, I shouldn't have been cussing like I was but I, I was pissed off. Um, and I said, use a son of a bitch. But then if you, you notice, I said, let me calm down. Cause then I caught it and I came back and corrected and I apologized. I said, no, you're not a son. You're not a bitch. You're not a son of a bitch. Cause your mother is not a bitch. Your mother is not a bitch. I said, but you are a bitch. That's what I said. I said, but you are a bitch. And then in the full video, I, before I go off there again, I apologize again because his mother is not a bitch, but he's the bitch. That's what I said. So it's an error for him to keep running around saying, he called my mother a bitch. He called my mother. Blah, 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 blah. That's an error, you know, 
Because when the person corrects themselves and apologize, now I can't apologize for you being a bitch because that's what you are. I mean, your actions show that. Um, then you talked about emotion. And I know, I think it was one video and we'll show it. And I was talking with uh, Brother Craig. We were going back and forth. And in my talk, you can hear me crying and trying to talk at the same time. It's because I love my people and I know what we suffered and it's hurtful. It's hurtful. It was hurtful for me to hear Craig say that I got to consider other people when I want to do what's best for my people, when other people don't consider us, because they don't. They just do what they do and expect us to accept it. And for me, I can't do that. I can't do that. You can judge me by the quality of my love that I have for myself and I have for my people. And I'm not going to compromise that. I'm not like you. I don't look to get along with white folks. I don't look to get along with swirlers. I don't look for none of that. I'm not perfect. No, I'm not. But I want what I want for my people is perfect. It is perfect. I don't drink. I don't get drunk. I don't do any of that. But if people have a drink here and a drink, they're not sloppy drunk and tearing shit up. And no, I'm not going to throw my lifestyle on them. Why would I do that? No, I'm not going to do that. It, it, I don't see that. Okay, it's time. All right. All right. That was a good round. Good round. Um, now uh, we're going to go into uh, the second. We're going to go to the second round. That was the first round. We're going to go to the second round. And um, Talik, whenever you're ready, uh, Brother Craig, you can set the timer for another 30 minutes. Okay. It's timer set as soon as Brother Talik says the word. Yes, I'm ready. Okay, we're going right now. Okay. Um, I want to make uh, point out a fact here. Like I said in a video early, um, for those who follow my page about nation, the nation of Islam mentality or mindset. If you look at the history of the nation of Islam, and I was there under Farrakhan, they will never admit or confess error. They will never do that. They will tippy toe a little bit and make you think that they accepted error, but they don't do that. I was in the nation of Islam. I know how they think. Now, Brother Maurice Muhammad is 1,000% in the wrong. 1,000% in the wrong. And I asked him, since we are different, then why don't you take your different and give it a different name? Don't use the name Mississippi Campaign. Since it's the initiative or whatever you call it, then you use that. Why you want to use the name that come from this platform? Since it's different. But see, that's the problem. You're using the Mississippi Campaign, that name, and it's not different. It's the same. That's a serious problem because it don't belong to you. But the nation of Islam, that mindset, they cannot never admit that they are wrong about anything. We may talk about that later on, about the assassination of Malcolm X. Elijah Muhammad was 1,000% in the wrong, and I love Elijah Muhammad, but he was wrong. He was in error. And they praised wrong, just like in the chat room while Brother Maurice was speaking. 
You have people in the chat room actually supporting ill behavior. Oh, he apologized to my mother. How are you apologizing to my mother when you calling her her son a bitch? If my mother was here, do you think that she would accept your apology and you calling her son a bitch? Well, uh, ma'am, you're not a bitch, but your son is. Do you really think that my mother is going to accept your apology? For real? No, she's not. No, she's not a, a Muslim. No, she's not. No, she's not a Muslim. She, she got, she got, she has sense. She's not going to accept your apology. I already know what my mother. Matter of fact, my mother probably be on here cussing you out if she was here on this live. She don't play that. Matter of fact, you talk about kicking my ass. My mother will drive to Nashville. That's the kind of person my mother is. You talk about kicking ass. My mother take you up on it, getting her ragged ass coupe and be driving down 24. There ain't no doubt about that. So no, my mother would not accept your apology. Your apology is insincere. Your apology is, is, a, is fake. Because ain't no man gonna call, ain't no woman no mother's gonna accept an apology from you and you're gonna call her son a bitch. That, that's, not only, that's not even common sense. Your mother wouldn't do it. And if you said she would, you're a liar. That's just the bottom line. But that's the thing about the nation of Islam mindset, y'all. That's the sick mind. That's what I had to deal with all the time. I was in the nation of Islam. And y'all think that, that the nation of Islam, that these people are, are your friends. Y'all actually think that Maurice Muhammad might be your friend, but they talk about behind your back. We go to interdenominational meetings, but when we go to the temple, do you know what they talk about in the temple? They say the people are ready to follow us. It's all about them following you. The concept of the nation of Islam is that you are gonna follow them. They're not interested. If you, if you look at Louis Farrakhan, he don't mess with nobody unless they are brown nosing him. Brown nosing him. He's not interested because the teachings of the nation of Islam, all of us are supposed to follow them. They are going, going to convert all of us into Muslims. That's the agenda. They don't even care nothing about black liberation. I'm telling you, I was there. I know I hear the rhetoric. I've been around this stuff since I was eight, seven, seven, eight years old. They want to convert us to Arab wannabes. And that's what you want to be in his reality. You're going to be an Arab wannabe because he's not going to go nowhere and he's not influenced by Nation of Islam and Arab teachings. You go there with him. Next thing you know, you begin your head chopped off because of something, something new that it came up with. Because in that type of environment, it's homosexuals today, race mixing tomorrow, and then it'll be, who knows what next? It won't never stop. It might be atheist. Who knows with that type of mindset? You never know. Let me look at my notes while he was speaking. And he was talking about, I made fun of brother guy's looks or whatever. Let's get the record straight. And the, uh, I don't know, I forgot exactly what video it was on. But brother guy was making a commentary about a sister, or was it homosexual? I forgot what it was. Anyway, he also has a self-righteous type mentality, like, like Brother Maurice, you know, self-righteous mentality. They don't do nothing wrong. Kick the homosexuals out, kick the whoever else out, but they're gonna stay. It's all right for them. No matter what they do detrimental, it's gonna be justified. They can stay. No, no, they don't have no problem. There's no, there's nothing that they do wrong. But anyway, what I was saying to Brother Guy in that situation, and I'm saying, I'm, I told Brother Guy, well, I'm going to take a self-righteous position. And since you're taking a self-righteous position, I'm going to take a self-righteous position, and I'm going to say, well, sir, since I'm going to, I'm, based on my self-righteousness, you're not black enough. You don't have enough melanin in your skin, so I'm going to say that you're not even a black man. Because I can, because I, I have more melanin than he do in my self-righteousness, because you're not black. I can claim, claim dark skin. I can claim black. You can't. You don't have enough melanin. So perhaps maybe one of your parents somewhere, I did not say nothing about your parents at all. But I'm saying that you're not a black man. 
based on my self-righteousness. You're not black enough. That's what I was telling him. It wasn't making no mockery of, of him or nothing. I'm giving him an example based on his mindset, on Maurice's mindset. Since they can judge people, then why can't you handle being judged yourself? So I, in my self-righteousness, because I'm so dark-skinned, let me turn this off. See, see how dark I really can get? See, I'm a, I'm, I can get dark. So in my self-righteousness, I'm telling him, you ain't black enough. You can't come into my reality. So you, you're closer to the peckerwood. You're closer to the white man. I shouldn't trust you since you, you, don't, you don't have the melanin. But see, they can judge people, but they don't want to be judged when it's their turn. That's not fair. That's not right. And then Brother Maurice continues to say that I made all these videos about him. Why did I make the videos about you, Brother Maurice? Huh? I made the videos because you kept talking about the Mississippi campaign. And you rep the Mississippi, Mississippi campaign. That's the only. So in the video, most of the time you will see the fake Mississippi campaign. That's what you will see. That's what you will see. I want to make sure people understand that's the fake. And I'm like Coca-Cola. I'm the real thing. I'm like, I'm like the Nation of Islam teaching. I'm the original man. You know, not, not a mulatto. Nothing against you, brother. Guy, I mean, because I, I didn't call you no mulatto stuff like that. You know where it comes from. But uh, yeah, he calls me a liar. Now, I will confess, I'm not like Brother Maurice. I will confess, yeah, I did let some of this stuff slide. I did. See, I'm telling the truth. You don't have to put up, you don't, don't even have to make a video. I admit, I let it, I let it slide. Because I really didn't understand really what was going. It was sort of, you know, we brothers just sitting around talking. And then sometimes things don't catch your eye to after the fact. But what is a fact now, now you know for sure. Now you know for sure. So now what do you do? You still going to hold on to the name. You still going to say, I'm Mississippi because of all the work I've done. you done that work for yourself. I was not on, when I was on that conference call, I told you I was taping that. You're a liar. Most of the things that I do, I tape. And then when you go back, since the video is on YouTube, the conference call, and, 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 and speaking of that, since you said, well, um, I didn't say nothing when it happened, when you was making these, uh, uh, these suggestions or whatever. At the time, you said, I didn't catch it. How long has that video been up? This is the first time you ever said anything. Well, you know, I ain't just nothing up. Take that, take that and put it on YouTube and whatever. This is the first time I ever heard you talk about that. Plus, y'all wasn't talking about a damn thing anyway. What secrets did y'all talk about? Hell, most of them Negroes on that conference call was confused. They didn't even have their act together. They don't even, they could they, they can't even comprehend what the damn Mississippi campaign was about anyway. We talked to, well, I ain't gonna, that's our private discussion. I'm not gonna say because those those your people. I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say what you said to me in private conversation after that conference call. But those people are what secrets? They didn't have no secrets to tell. Go, go listen to the video. It's up. The conference call, something, I forgot what the name of it. It's a conference, I guess. Angel Snub Number Seven conference call, or whatever. Maybe you can find it. them. Negroes ain't talking about no, no big secret, some some something big, or, or, or they ain't talking about nothing. Hell, I don't think hell. I was there. They confused the hell out of me. I like these cats don't have. They can't even comprehend what the hell I'm talking about. Hell, I was ready to leave the conference call. I was ready to leave. So I, I don't know what the big what's. Are you telling them that the enemy? They ain't telling the enemy a damn thing that y'all ass confused. You don't know what you're doing. And you're talking about what all the work that you done done. You done went on Google and you done researched this because you ain't, you damn sure didn't go to city to city pressman. You got on Google. Who gives a damn? It don't mean nothing. <laughs> it don't mean nothing at all. You didn't do it for me. You was doing that for yourself. You didn't bring none of this bits and pieces to me. You was doing it for yourself for your own grandiosity, your own arrogance. Because you told, and you said many times, they follow me, my followers. See, that's that nation of Islam mentality. Do you hear what uh, Brother um, Maurice was saying? 
I was born for my people. I do this for my people. I was born for my people. I do this for my people. Did you hear him? See, that's that God complex. Follow me. That's the that's that nation of Islam complex. I'm telling you. You don't never hear me talk about nobody following me because I'm not interested. This is a team effort. And everybody on the team has a say so. Nobody is following me nowhere. I would not suggest that you follow me anywhere. This is a team effort, team decision. However, this what we have, this operation Exodus Mississippi, the original, the only Mississippi campaign. And the reason why it's Operation Exodus Mississippi when it's all said and done is because this brother stole the idea and ran with it for his agenda. And y'all keep saying dumb stuff, even in the chat room. Angel Snuff Nuff 7 ain't going to Mississippi. It has nothing to do with, nobody said nothing about going to no damn Mississippi. Why you talk? Keep saying the same dumb stuff over and over again. Never said nothing about going to no Mississippi. Influencing the population there in order to for them to use the, the law to benefit themselves. And eventually all of us. Because all of us are going to participate in helping them get that job done. Never said nothing about homosexuality. Y'all keep talking about, I don't know what you're talking about. Has nothing to do with the Mississippi, the original Mississippi campaign. Take control of the law so it can benefit. Where does homosexuality fit in? Even so, y'all are living with homosexuals right now in your neighborhood, interracial couples and drunks and pedophiles and murderers and every other riffraff. Right now you're living in it. And it's not going to change. They've been talking this nation building, the nation of Islam, been talking this separation garbage for over 80 years. Where has the nation of Islam separated to? except to the bank. Elijah Muhammad went to the bank to cash them checks. Louis Farrakhan go to the bank to cash them checks. Where did they separate? Separated right, right to the white man's neighborhood. Y'all a bunch of chunks. Easily fooled with, with this fantasy rhetoric. 80 years. The Nation of Islam in 1975 was worth $80 million. They made no attempt out of the 40 some year history when Elijah Muhammad was here, they made no attempt to separate. They know dang well, this nation is not going to give them seven states. They know this nation is not going to, they did not want to give you 40 acres and a mule. What make you think they're going to give you a state? Try to give, try to give seven states to some Negroes. These Caucasian people go crazy. You talk about the Civil War. Let them try to do that in 2018. Talk about, well, y'all white folks got to leave Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia. You talking about a civil war. Woo! But see, the nation of Islam, that rhetoric, they know it's not going to happen. That's how they reel you in because they know, with all due respect, they know some of us are very, very dumb. You don't think. You get caught up. You get caught up in the rhetoric. And God shall come down here, and the black man, an original man, shall do this, and we're the God of the universe. And you know, all y'all get caught up, <laughs> Brother Maurice. Tell it, baby, tell it, honey. Woo, Maurice, yeah, Woo. that's preaching, baby. That is real preaching. I love me some Maurice. Woo, and Maurice be and the blah blah, and I got, yeah, Maurice, get it, baby. That is it. <laughs> you can see him in the chat room. You can see him in the chat room, hooping and hollering. Emotional. But what you're talking about is not realistic. Well, he said, I ain't just stepped up seven. I don't have a plan. Guess what, Brother Maurice? I agree with you. This is a big, this is something that's very big. But the, the foundation has been laid. I understand what needs to be done. How it needs to be done, we really don't actually know. But we have an idea. And we want to take it slow and we want to move carefully because we want to be successful. We don't want to be in a hurry. We want to be successful. So when you make that move, you want to be guaranteed successful. You don't want to be in no hurry. That's why some of y'all got babies y'all don't want. 
that's using a hurry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But if you had took your time and did the right thing, you would have them unwanted babies that some of y'all claim that you want because you know you didn't want them. You just you was just in a hurry to get it. That's what it was. And then it just so happened that you got a, a child. You, you really you really don't want the child. I mean, it's here now, so I love the baby, but you really, you really don't want it. No. See, we want this. And we want to move carefully. And we want to move in a way so that the enemy don't even pay us attention. I can guarantee you, if this idea that Brother Maurice is talking about, I can guarantee you, if if people begin to hear, well, you know, we're not we're not allowing interracial couples. We're not allowing. You're not allowing in the United States. You're not allowing. I guarantee you, people are gonna want to move where you at just for the hell of it. There is a there is a, a county in uh, Georgia called Forsyth County. Oprah Winfrey went there, and they was bragging, "Ain't no niggas in Forsyth County." And Oprah went to Forsyth County, and I think some of some some of them called her a nigger, and they just proud. Ain't no niggers been in Forsyth County in over a hundred some years. Nobody. That that's where they made their mistake. They went on national TV with Oprah Winfrey. Next thing you know, all these people want to come to move to Forsyth County. So now it's 2018. Do you think that they talk about ain't no niggers? And for us, I, do you think they talk about that now? No, because in the United States, you cannot discriminate. In the United States, you can't tell another citizen where they can and cannot live. You want to talk about ain't no niggers living. Go to Forsyth County right now. And then uh, everybody that they did not want is living there. Now the old prejudice heads, they probably moved. They moved away. But Forsyth County now is got have all kind of different people in it now. So the same thing would happen to Maurice and his, his people. People were, others around the country were here, and, and you know, ain't no homosexuals there. And you're gonna have homosexuals and all other kinds of riffraff that's gonna purposely come and you're gonna try, and you're gonna mess around and kill one of them. And then that's gonna be a big problem. But see, that's, that's Maurice, that's y'all problem. My concept has nothing to do with that stuff. My concept may, the end result may end up that way. But I won't be around to see it and don't care at this time. At this point in time, you need something big. So brothers and sisters in California and New York and Detroit and Georgia, everybody in this nation. That's why I asked and sent a certified letter to Minister Farrakhan because he can do this. He can make it a national effort almost overnight. This is the type of thing that we should have had at the Million Man March. Instead of Minister Farrakhan's speech about the dollar bill and what the dollar bill gonna do and let's atone for our sins and all this stuff, he could have had Operation Exodus Mississippi and everybody around the country rally our forces to concentrate on making this one geographical area our sanctuary. Do you know if that happened in 1995, if that, if Operation Exodus Mississippi happened in 1995, can you imagine where we would be at right now? You talk about you want your own nation. All this opens up your own nation, your own, your own everything. If you want to build a nation on Africa, you, you open yourself up to making deals with the continent. Because now you're giving yourself a platform. Now you gain real power. No choice. You can go to the government, the federal government, and tell the federal government as a state or states, look, you have political prisoners of ours. You don't have to set them free. Let Mississippi, let Georgia, let Alabama, let us have our political prisoners. Let them, let them die with dignity. And uh, We'll take care of them. We'll make sure they don't leave the, the state of Mississippi or whatever. Let us have our political pr prisoners. As a state, you can go to the federal government and say, look, we need, we want reparations. 
And you know it's not going to an individual, it's going to a state because the state is designed to help the people that reparations was designed for. And everybody around the nation benefit. So if the state of Mississippi became a state where we produced nothing but organic food, real organic food, organic beef, organic chicken, organic pork, some of us, a lot of us eat pork, so organic pork, whatever it is that we produce organically, cotton, we can become the biggest producers of organic products and, and ship out all over the world. Plus you feed your people good food, not none of that Monsanto, Monsanto based garbage. You taking your destiny in your own hand. And even the little children participate because the little baby can put a seed in the ground and grow and grow a, 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 a stalk of corn. That's what it's about. It's not about what I want personally. It's a lot of things. It's a, I, I wanted her on the wall personally. It ain't about what I want personally. It's about what is in the best interest of my people. I do this for my people. It's all about, but your people are drunks. Your people are homosexuals. Your people are involved in the race. Your people's a whole lot of things. Don't say that. You are a liar when you say that. You're not doing it for the. And I look, I'm one of your people. And you don't represent me either. I don't agree with the stuff that you're talking about. You have the right to do that. But I don't I don't care nothing about that stuff that you're talking about because I don't ostracize nobody. Because I want I want the people to be involved. You don't care nothing about the people. You want certain ones because you have a personal agenda. This is not a, the Mississippi campaign is not about me personally. It's about what can we do for us so all of us can be happy. You don't have to live around homosexuals. You don't have to live around, you still don't. But this is what I guarantee. See, y'all live in La La Land. You living with these people right now. I can guarantee you, you're going to die with them being around you. You're going to die that way. What you tripping off of? Hell, you probably work with homosexuals at your job. They're your boss. And you say, yes, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. Homosexual. Yes, sir. I do. I was going to do that, Mr. Gay person. Yes, sir. Oh, you you's married to a white woman? Oh, yes, sir. I got it. You know, do I get paid? Do I get paid today? Hell, you work for them. Y'all tripping off stuff that don't mean nothing. You're living in fantasy world. It's not real. The Nation of Islam talk all that separation crap for 80 some years. Y'all still talk this nation building stuff. 100 years since Marcus Garden. Wait, where your nation at? I'm, is it under my lap? Wait, where your nation at? Y'all having all these babies. We building our own nation. You know, when a bird builds a nest, they build the nest first. They don't put the eggs, lay the eggs, then build the nest. You making babies for a nation that don't even exist. Your thinking is what? You live in la-la land, fantasy. You influenced by all this black power, black conscious rhetoric garbage. I know about it. I lived it for years. Go to jail. Go to jail like I did. And you're going to find out all this supreme knowledge, all this supreme wisdom, and all this stuff that you think that make your ass smart. You're going to find out it don't mean nothing. It don't mean nothing at all. It just feel good. Y'all might as well go back to church. I like church myself. I was treated very well in the church. Hey, Christian brothers and sisters, I love y'all. <laughs> I've never been treated bad in church. They, they, they actually respect. But when it comes to Muslims, and these black power folks, they don't respect nobody because they're a bunch of know-it-alls. They know everything. But if they know everything, how come they ain't got nothing? You know everything. You got the supreme wisdom. Dr. Clark said, Dr. Ben said, the, the, the pyramids, and don't have a pot to piss in. And then you don't want to get on board something that you know it sounds like it can work because it's not affiliated with your fantasy world. It's too real. And so you reject it. I don't care. Keep rejecting it and keep having nothing. Y'all been doing talking this stuff for over 100 years and you don't have a pot to piss in. Nation of Islam don't have a pot to piss in. What Farrakhan do, he's worth about, what, $3 million? He's living good. And some of these 
YouTubers that talk all this black conscious stuff with these Patreon accounts, they probably doing good, but y'all as a people, you still on the, on the job with your homosexual boss. That's where you at. And gonna stay there to the day you die. You're gonna be an African American to the day you die. That's what they're gonna put in the grave. That's what you're gonna be known by. You're not even willing to do the work that you that you claim that you need to do. Most of y'all just sit back and listen to debates like this one. You know why you came to this debate? Because you want to hear me and Brother Maurice beefing. Y'all like stuff like that. Y'all like to see brothers at each other's throats. Nonsense. That's what you love because you were filthy people. You in filth. We were born, we are created in filth, in debauchery. And that's what you love in the toilet. So how can you judge another brother and sister? We all in the same damn toilet. You a doo-doo stain just like me. A doo-doo stain. You a turd floating in the bowl just like me. What make you better? Brother Maurice and these other brothers, they think they better. I smell doo-doo. Mm, is that Brother Maurice? Did you clean? Brother Maurice, did you clean yourself? Did you do something on yourself? <laughs> but you know, I'm gonna tell you, we should leave this really. We should be able to talk like brothers for real and solve this dilemma because we have more, we have bigger fish to fry. I like Brother Maurice. I've known Brother Maurice since 2013, and that's just the way he is. I just you know, me and him went back and forth about Minister Farrakhan way back in 2013. So I don't trip really off Brother Maurice. When he was talking all that, your mama and a, you a nigga bitch, and, you know, I don't trip off Brother That's the way he been since 2013. And you can ask Brother Maurice. Even when he was angry at me way back then, I didn't trip off of it. Brother Maurice would, would debate other people, and I would send Brother Maurice an email and say, you did a great job. I'm not going to say that today, Brother Marie. <laughs> I'm not going to say that today. But back then, yeah, you against somebody else, you did, a, you did a great job. We need to stop thinking about ourselves and what we want. We really do need to move more carefully, more wiser. Because, see, that mythology, the enemy already knows. It's not no secret. You're not doing nothing special. But when you do it in this manner, it's different because you're not drawing no attention. There's no controversy. You're doing everything within the law and you're not trying to force nobody to do nothing. Everybody's happy and they don't, they don't, they, they won't even understand what happened to them until, until, until the bomb drop. You have to be more wise. You have to be more smart. I'm not going to tell you exactly how we should move because I would, I'm not, I don't want to give my enemy the heads up. No, but that mythology that many of y'all have, that's been there, been there, done that. It don't work. Y'all been trying for a hundred years. Uh-oh, time is out. All right. I rest my mic. I rest my mic. Hey, yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Okay. Let me get ready to restart this. Okay, just a second. So, Brother Guy, is Brother Guy still here? Yes, I am. Okay, so um, the timer set. So when, whatever, whenever you want to go ahead and announce. All right, Maurice, just let us know when you're ready. Yes, sir, I'm ready. Okay, you're live. All right. Well, family, again, we've heard a comedian, and we're talking serious business. This quote unquote debate is called the Black Civil War, the battle for Mississippi. And he took a lot of time to try to condemn the nation of Islam to try to get me to talk on that. Well, in the legal world, that would be called a red herring. And I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to take the foolish bait. Let's stick to the subject, the topic. Now, he said that I don't have to show the video. So he's admitting that this, you know, thing that he puts up that we're hunting homosexuals or that's our thing. He admits that he's lying about that, that that wasn't the issue. 
he also admits that, you know, um, he taped the first call. That's treason right, right off the bat. You know, you have to understand who can you trust? Who can you, if you go look at my channel and go through my videos, you don't see me on there teaching religion. Now I can, but I don't do it. Why don't I do it? Because religion is your personal thing. Okay. My personal thing goes back to our mission statement. It's to be able to, to produce a fertile ground for our people to be able to do for self. For our people to be able to be safe and secure. I'm not here to teach you religion. That's not what I'm here for. So you won't find on my channel me teaching you that. There's other channels and places that you can go for that. I'm a Muslim, but that's me. Um, because that's what I found for myself. And that's what made me who I am. So I don't trip on religion. Um, he talked about, Lord have mercy. Brother Guy, can you show that um, first PDF so we can go and break some things down? Okay, just give me one second. Okay. Okay, let me read this. Okay. Okay, uh, let me just screen share this. Okay. Um, can you bring it up a little bigger? Okay. Okay. Uh, move it up some so we can get the whole United States in. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Now, for the initiative, we have been up and operating woo, for at least, I would say, five, five years. Okay. And what we do, multifaceted for the initiative. Yes, we have the radio network that we do, but we also do other things where I have gotten people who were wrongfully convicted. I have gotten them out. I have represented clients who were raped um, by the DC police and we work to get her in a better situation. Um, we've helped children, um, mothers that have lost their children due to CPS. Uh, we've dealt with mothers who've lost children um, through the system. Uh, we've dealt with school issues. So you have to understand myself, a lot of people, they call me, they say, I'm an NOI activist. And that name I never gave myself. I never said that I was an NOI activist. I just always said I'm Brother Maurice. But the people, that's the name that they gave me um, because they recognize that I am a member of the Nation of Islam and they recognize that I'm out here on point fighting for our people. So this, what you're seeing now, this is part of the information sheet in my organization called The Initiative. Now, here you see the U.S. And the idea, um, move up a little bit, Brother Craig, so we can see the wording. Okay. Uh, one more up so we can see Region 4. Okay, perfect. Stop, stop. Okay, so you see that we broke everything down into regions. Region one, Maine, Massachusetts, New York, Pennsylvania. Region two, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina. Region three, Illinois, Ohio, um, Virginia, West Virginia. Region four, Carolina, I mean, um, California, Arizona, Washington, Texas, and Louisiana. So the idea was to have um, local organizing committees in each city, we wanted to have a, a branch of the initiative in each city and then broke it, break that down 
to each district within the city. Okay. The reason that we're do we were doing that was our, our plan to get it done because we want to do what? We want to change the condition that our people are in. We don't have money to go buy a city. I know I don't have money. Collectively, yeah, we can do that to go out and buy a city. But why should we waste money where we can use that money for something else when we can take what's already here and take it over? Okay, so this plan was a very broad plan, but it was a very workable plan because from each district within that city, the initiative will work with the members and then they go out and they find either A, we find a politician that's already dedicated to the things that we want, or B, which is like what I really like, is we create our own politicians and then we get them elected. So you have one from each district in a city on the city council. That means you're running the city council. Because what we have noticed through research is that not a lot of people come out and vote. And there has been judges that been elected and prosecutors elected and sheriff elected that are not on our side. But we don't vote, so they get in these seats. We can look at Ferguson as an example, an all black city, and look at the mayor. Look at how they were robbing our people. So the initiative, our goal is to what? Redistribute the power to us. And we start on local scales. You capture the city council, you capture the mayor office, now you're in power. See, one thing that when Barack Obama was president, he didn't do nothing for us, but we voted him in office. Our people were still getting killed. Education was still sorry as hell. We were still suffering the ills that we believed his change would bring. And it never brung it. He sold us a theme. And that's what uh, uh, Talik is trying to sell you, a theme. That's why he has no vision. That's why he has no plan. I have a plan. And as you can see, when you're gaining local power, you control who's in the police force. See, I'm not afraid. When you hear him say, y'all not going to do this, y'all not going to do that, and he makes fun and laugh at us, because we say we're smart enough to figure out what we want and to go get it. But he says, you're not going to, the white man ain't going to let you. Nigga, we ain't asking the white man to let us do nothing. We have decided that we're gonna do this. And it does not require the white man's permission. Because we said, we will go to war with those who try to stop us from what we're doing. So people will say, well, what does that look like, Brother Muhammad, that we will go to war? It means, because what we're doing right now, this is wartime. This is war. Now, I know the people who um, support my channel, who support me, the stuff that Talek says out his mouth is not going to make none of them leave their brother to go follow him. It ain't going to happen. They're not going anywhere. They're too smart for that. Um, they're not the kind of people that will be tricked by gimmicks and laughter. They wanna know serious plans because the future of our people depends upon what we do today. So while the enemies are fighting each other, we have to be working diligently 
so that when they stop fighting each other and they're ready to focus back on us, we're stronger than we, than we were when they began to fight. So that's why we got to get down to the serious business. So with this, for his followers, his people that watch him, you know, and, and you're black, I'm showing you what a plan looks like and that it is something that can be done in our lifetime. I'm not here to sell you something big. You know, he's doing the same shit Donald Trump did. You know, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna make America great again. Throwing out these slogans, thinking you stupid like white people and going to follow him because he's giving you a big slogan with no substance. And that is not going to lead us to freedom. It may get him some people who don't know. They may look and yeah, 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 like the Trump supporters. But at the end of the day, they'll be in the same condition they was prior to him making these big words. So you take local power. You control that city. The next thing you got to control is the county. Now, of course, white people ain't dumb. When they see that you're gathering power and you're not doing it with the Democratic Party, because we got to create our own party. We got to create our own party that our values and our things don't get disrupted in the Democratic or Republican Party, because neither one of them are any good for us. So we got to create our own and we live up to it. You know, I used to say, um, if you look at one of my lectures, that, I'm not, not a lecture, that one of the speaking engagements I did in Ohio for our brothers and sisters that are locked down. And I put this idea out there. I said, what you should do is when these politicians come to you and want your vote, have them sign a contract that says, if you betray us, you give us the right to kill you. Now, every time I said that, no matter who's my audience, they all break out laughing, ah, except for me. I'm serious. I'm saying, look, look, it's not funny. It sounds funny, but I'm really serious because you have been tricked by politicians. There are a lot of you and say, yeah, I'm going to do this when I get in office. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. They go to office and they get amnesia. They forget who voted for. When they doing the budget and they cutting up budgets to see where the money is going to be allocated, where's the money for us? Where's the money that comes down to the people that put you there? All of a sudden, the money's gone. So we can't trust them. So if they're not going to sign the contract, which they won't, because they already know that they're going to sell you out. So when they say, no, I'm not going to sign it, then you ain't got to waste your time listening to them and you ain't got to waste your vote. You find the one that will sign it or you grow your own politicians. See, we got to learn that we got to give people retribution when they screw over us, when they betray us. We got to give them the pain that they give us. And as long as we keep turning the other cheek, they're going to continue to do to us. And why would we leave a legacy of cowardice to our children? the same damn legacy of cowardice that was left to us because people like Talik are afraid of the enemy. They are afraid to think outside of the enemy's control. They are afraid to plan for your best interests. I'm not afraid. I don't have that fear in me. So I can sit back and plan. Brother, can you bring the, the clip back up, please? <clears throat> Brother Guy.
Brother Guy. Is Brother Guy with him? He's there, but he's on. He's on. Okay, yeah, there we go. But I need it on the big screen, Brother Guy. Brother guy, we need it on I need it on the big screen. I, all right, I'm sorry about that. You want a big screen? Uh-huh. Okay, can you move it up to uh move it up to the covenant for to the vision and covenant part? You see it? Okay, keep going up. Keep going. Okay, stop. Stop. Perfect. Okay. So, because we're going after power, because we're, we're losing, we're losing our lives for bullshit. So in order to save our lives, we have to be understanding where we go from here. So in our, um, on our vision and our covenant, on our vision statement, we say that there is no better time to mobilize and organize our people locally, nationally, and put systems in place that will permit a successful programmatic thrust to bring to fruition what we envision for ourselves. So we're talking about making programs. Now, this is not, again, because Talek says that, you know, uh, we're going to just sit back. I'm going to sit back and make these rules. No. We, <laughs> we will sit back because me, I only know, I needed to go back up there, brother, brother guy, it keeps going down. I only know my part. I know my part. So like yesterday, we had an interview um, for a new member of the initiative and our, our sister, she comes to us, she's um, in IT and she knows how to do power grids because that was one of the worries that I had because I know that when the enemy tries to attack us, whatever day that will be, the first thing that they would do is cut the power grid. So we need to know how to create our own so that if they go that route, we're still good because we have our own power grid. It's still not up on the, the big board, dear brother. Brother Craig is, is not on the big board. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not control. Not control. Um, yeah. Brother Guy. Brother Craig, how much of my time am I losing? Where, where am I at on my time? One second. I don't know. Is Brother Guy here? He just said something. I don't remember. Right now. I don't know. What's going on? Brother Guy in Hollywood. Okay, look, I don't because I don't know how much of my time I'm losing. Um, so, uh, man, we could give you a couple more minutes because, man, this is not your fault. What's happening right now? I'm not sure where Brother Guy has went went to. I'm, I have no clue. Okay, Brother Guy Nollywood Jr., are you there, bro? <clears throat> yes, yes, I'm here. Okay, Maurice was talking. Yeah. Yeah, the, the thing keeps pop the my display keeps going. I needed to stay on the board so they can see. Okay, give me one second. Okay. Uh, and, and how much time do I have left? Uh nine minutes and forty seconds counting down. So I mean You uh, see it? Do you I, see it? Do you see it? It, it's, it keeps going away. Oh, okay. Give me one second. All right. Okay. So, I'm having um, I'm having uh, technical difficulties here. Give okay. One second. Okay. Um. So, in the covenant, it it talks about it says nobody will ever change the condition of a people until they change within themselves. Family, the behavior is on us to change our behavior to build love, trust, and confidence in each other 
and in our people for us, then 95 percent of our percent of our problems will be solved. Now, in order to undertake this kind of work, that means that we have to accept our responsibility. We have to accept the challenge that has been laid upon us to secure this. And no game playing comedian will get you that. This is real life. As you if you remember in the Nat Turner movie, in the last fight scene, and he got he was getting the permission from his wife and his mother, and he said before they fought the last fight, he said, This is for the future generations of our people. And that's what this is. That's why we have labeled this Mississippi campaign the gateway to freedom. And once we are successful in one city, it will spread. And then we can we can actually do because all of this that he talked about of you know growing our own food and all that, he got that from me. That you check the video, I was the one who said that because that comes with having your own territory. You gotta take your mouth out of the enemy's kitchen. You gotta stop eating his food. So that means what? That we gotta grow our own, right? That's why we gotta have our hospitals that we control. So if you control a city, you control your hospitals, you control your food, you control your schooling, the things that are necessary. That's why we will have a militia because a militia will back the police because we know they will be angry and they will come to try to stop us and destroy us, but a fight will break out and we will kill them. We don't believe in taking prisoners. This is your freedom. They're not going to repro they're not going to reproduce Black Wall Street when they massacred us. That's in their mind. And they're doing it every day. But when they get to that city that we built and we will protect what we built, we will send them the other way because we're not playing. It's just like when Israel fought Hezbollah and Israel lost, they lost, they lost. Somebody got to stand up. Somebody got to be able to say what is real from what is not. Y'all know I don't play. I'm very serious about this. Because I want my children to live. I want your children to live. I want our children to live. I want our women to be respected and protected. I want our brothers to be respected and protected. But you can't play games with an enemy that's set up to kill you very fast. If he wakes up to say we just you can't play games with them. We cannot play games. Uh, how much time do I have left? Huh? I said a little over five minutes. Okay. Now there's a uh, brother guy. Can you play that next video for me, please? Which one? Um, the one with the sister and the glasses, the two glasses. Okay, you see it? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. We can't hear it. Oh. I've really been thinking about some. Assalamu alaikum and peace be unto you. I'm Sister Latasha Muhammad. And I've really been thinking about something very hard lately. Something that we post and we say, but I wonder if we really are truly understanding what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is trying to teach us. And that is, you don't have to condemn a dirty glass. All you have to do is put a clean glass right next to the dirty glass and the dirty glass will condemn itself. What is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad trying to teach us here?
what is he saying? Do we truly, really understand what he's saying here? I'm going to repeat what, he's, what he says, what he's teaching us. You don't have to condemn a dirty glass. All you have to do is put a clean glass next. Okay. Thank you. Now, with Talek's plan, you don't find me condemning his plan. You don't find me doing that. Because what I do is what our sister just said. You put a dirty glass up to the clean glass and the people will make their decision themselves. You know, for me, I know 100% what I'm saying is right. And I know 100% that we will achieve this in our lifetime. And I know 100% that you deserve this. We've played the backhand, the turn the other cheek and all that for years. And we should be tired. We should be tired. We should be ready to get up and do something for ourselves. And I even told Tyler, I called him when we were having our disagreement early. And I said, I said, brother, you do your thing. You do your thing. Because if it works, then that's more power in the state house. I condemn him. I don't do the videos like he did of me. And the only reason I wanted to whoop his ass is because of the continual uh, um, attacking me. And then when others around him wanted me to be able to defend myself while he's attacking me, he didn't want to get let me in. And that ticked me off, but you didn't want to let me in, but you find your way on my shit? Oh, yeah, I, I went off. But this is not something that we can play with. Brother Guy, show the other video, please. There's no sound to it. Brother God, there's no sound to it. Suicide. Watch just moments before the I'm show. Sorry, let me, let me, let me roll on. I'm sorry. About Charles that. Kidd this morning after a behavioral therapist was shot by an officer after he held his hands in the air lying on the ground, his patient with autism sitting right nearby. ABC's Gio Benitez has more on this story. Good morning to you, Gio. Amy, good morning to you. That new video taking social media by storm overnight. The unarmed black behavioral therapist shot by police on the streets of Miami. And police say it all started when they got a call about a man threatening suicide. Watch, just moments before the shooting, you can see 47-year-old Charles Kinsey, his hands raised in the air. The video released overnight by his lawyer. Kinsey in the yellow shirt works at an assisted living facility. And the man at his feet is a 23-year-old with autism who ran away from the group home. Listen as Kinsey talks to police. <laughs> Kinsey even tries to calm the young man with autism. At some point, one of the officers shoots Kinsey, but he survives and speaks with Fox Station WSVN from his hospital bed, recounting what he told that officer. And I'm telling him again, sir, it's no need for firearm. I'm unarmed. He's articulate. That's time. Yeah, but um, due to technical difficulties, like how much extra time are you going to give him? All right. No, I'm asking a question. How, how much extra time? Uh, we give him 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes? Well, uh, I mean, how much How much minutes that, we, that he lost? Well, let's ask him. 
I don't know. I wouldn't just just give me two minutes. Just just give me two minutes. I'll I'll, I'll wrap it up. Two two minutes. Yeah, just give me two minutes. All right, all right. All right. So you want me to keep playing this? Oh uh, no. Uh -uh. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, bro. All right. Thank you. The brother asks, "Why did you shoot me? Why did you shoot me?" Now, I don't want to live around people that will shoot me just because I'm black. I don't want to live around people who will not defend me when I'm shot, even with my hands up. So if I don't want that, then the, the, the smart thing to do is to go out and make your own reality. And that's what this Mississippi campaign that I lead it's all about. This is the only Mississippi campaign. We have not changed our name. He changed his name. So they're the exodus. And let them stay that. But we are unmoved. We don't compromise. And we're not changing. We're forward motion. We are moving forward. So to his people that are watching, if you want something real, then you come here. If you're tired of the comedian and all that foolishness and you want real, you come here. We are the clean glass. And this you know. In your heart of hearts, you know damn well what I'm telling you is truthful. You know that. But you got to have enough courage to tell the truth to yourself and say, the brother is right, and I'm going to roll with what's right. See, because far, far too long, uh, Kwame Kilpatrick said this when he was mayor of Detroit. He said, my talent took me places where my character was not ready for me to go. There's a lot of people that's in front of us that don't have the character to go where we need to go. So we have to hold each other accountable and to go. And just like we have in my organization, if I'm wrong, it is their job to correct me. And if they say, and, and if I'm in error and they correct me, and if my punishment is to sit down and be quiet for 90 days, and I'm going to accept that because I'm wrong. And they love me enough to help me to be right. That's love. That's mm -hmm. discipline. Because we love our people and we want us in a better condition than the condition we were birthed in. It's our time now. That's yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Brother all, right. all right. That was a good round. I, I apologize, my brother. Technical difficulties, you know. Um, but we definitely got it in. Um now here's now this gonna be this gonna be a real deep one right here, right? Now I'm gonna let y'all guys go at it. Y'all gotta I'm gonna give y'all half an hour and y'all can go at it. Um just be you know. Just keep it, try to keep it clean, you know, no name calling, um, but just tack the information, all right? So, um, uh, Craig, you can set it up for 30 minutes. Okay. And these guys gonna just- you Need to go a little bit over 30 minutes, it's no problem, but- Okay. okay. Just a little, little over, a little over. Yeah, okay, so- We don't, we don't wanna make it a circus, but you know, we, we wanna get the information, just making sure you know, their, their information uh, gets out. So, all right. Um, Talik, Maurice, are y'all ready? Yeah. All right. Hey. Now, are you ready, Craig? Yes, sir, they can go. Okay. All right. Let's get ready to rumble. Go okay. ahead. Mm. Let, me, let me ask this brother this real quick. <clears throat> And if I have to, I'll show, I'll show the, the text. How long, 
when was the first time I asked you about a debate? Not really a debate. I asked you about, I did not like what you said to my assistant. You was making accusations that we represent the Rainbow Coalition and we love homosexuals and all this other nonsense. And I asked you for a debate, for a civil discussion. And in the text, you told me, why don't we put you on trial for treason? That's what you came back. I didn't ask to put you on trial for treason. I asked you, can we have a civil cordial debate over your accusations of which you haven't proven that right now? I mean, you keep talking about this Rainbow Coalition. You didn't show none of my videos where I advocate homosexuality or race mixing or none of the things that you're charging. I've been on YouTube for 11 years. It should be very easy to go out in YouTube land and the internet and find videos where I advocate those behaviors. In fact, I make it very clear even to my audience. They know that I view homosexual activity and interracial relationship as unnatural behaviors. That has nothing to do with the fact that I still love my people because there's things wrong with me. I accept us, us all of us, our negative and positive. But I want to know, that was about a month ago. I got the text if I have to show it because you don't want to lie. And I'm also waiting for you to tell me, show the evidence that I called the police on you. That's what I really want to see. Can you address that, uh, brother? Sure. You, um, well, your first question about the debate over a month ago, you did. And I said I wasn't going to do it for multiple reasons. First of all, uh, my staff said that I shouldn't because I don't have a reason to. I did a, lec I did a, a video and it was called, We Legitimize Bastards. <clears throat> okay, We Legitimize Bastards. And in that discussion I was saying, and I wasn't talking about, you know, children born out of wedlock, I wasn't dealing with that. But the bastard was illegitimate people who who behavior and who ways are not good. So for me to actually debate you, then that would be giving you more clout than you actually deserve. So, you know, you, like you said, you've been on YouTube for 11 years and out of your 11 years, what is the reputation that you have become? Your reputation is that you use a sellout um, a coon, uh, an agent. I mean, you know, the list goes on and on and on and on. Um, so, and, and like I said, um, before, because I got in, you know, did a debate and my question was, well, what am I going to get out of it? Because he ain't going to stop doing the shit he doing that he's attacking me. You wasn't going to stop that. So what nothing I was going to get out of it. What nothing I was going to get out of it. But certain people said, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. Go ahead. So I said, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and do it. Okay. But I knew that you was going to lose. I know that. You know that. That's why you were trying to get me on, on stuff that wasn't even a part of the debate. Um, and your second question, what was your second question? You said and you told your audience that I called the police yeah. on. Where's the evidence? Right. The evidence is if y'all go back, because he said I was going to show y'all some videos, and he said I didn't have to show the video. So the video where he's talking about homos, and he did it on this video. He said, you know, well, we want the homosexual, the swirlers, and the white people. We're not telling them not to be around us. Well, our vision is we don't want them around us, and we have that right. So if we're saying no, and you're mad at us because we're saying no, that they're not welcome. And you're saying they are welcome. So you are a rainbow push nigga. And in the rainbow, which color? Which color is not represented in the goddamn rainbow? Ain't no black in the rainbow. So that's why in this rainbow push thing that he got going on, that's why I called the other day like Jesse Jackson. You out here talking all this and that. And you promoting white people, but you will just dissing us because we don't want to be associated with swirlers. We don't want to be associated with white people. We don't want to be associated with the homosexual agenda. That's our right to not to be 
uh, around that foolishness. That's our right. And we accept that as our right. And we're going to make that so because we have that right to do. So for you to attack me or us over that, and we, we didn't attack you. I didn't attack you. You did the first shots fired, and you continue to fire. You continue to fire, and we continue to grow while you continue to fire. That's your answer. No, no, that's not the complete answer. The answer that I was looking for is you claim you made a video said I called the police on you. Where's the evidence? If you go look at your video that you said it, now I can find it. You say it right there. I'm going to call the police. I'm going to get a lawyer. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And you said it in this video. Well, the Nation of Islam, when they say they're going to kill you, they're going to kill you. And I never threatened to kill you. What I said was this. I said, where do you live? We can handle this like men. I will come to where you are and I will whoop your ass. That's what I said. I never threatened to kill you. I threatened to beat you up because I was tired of your bullshit. See, and this is another thing. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on. Everybody, I, I wanna, I wanna, let me finish. 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 Where's the evidence? Everybody got to understand that there comes a time, damn it. There comes a time where all this cooning bullshit is bullshit. And they want to keep bringing this shit up to us. Well, real black men, we will whoop your ass, God damn it. And that's real. And that's real. It ain't got no damn playtime. We want to be free. And you want to stop us from being free? So you want to run to the enemy? You got damn right. I'll whoop your ass and give you something to run and go tell. So by as Martin say, go tell that. I will. I have no problem with that. All right, right now, I'm right now. I want you to answer the question again for the third time. Where is the evidence? Did you I make the video saying you was gonna do it? That's that's not the question. Did the you question. make the video the saying you gonna do it? The question again for Did the fourth you time. make the video. The question for the fourth time is. Let me pause the video since you don't. You got an amnesia. You don't want to set it. The video. The question is: You went to your audience. Angel Snub Number Seven called the police on me. So that means you have evidence to say that Angel Snub Number Seven did, did that. Otherwise, you're a liar. I want to see the evidence that I called the police on you. What, what police department did I use? Who is this? Who is the sergeant? Who's the lieutenant? What police department did I use? You said to told them in your video, Angel Snub Number Seven called the police on me, not threatened to call the police on me because the video is just a threat. It did not. I did not say. It. I was calling the police on you. Yeah, you did. Yes, what? you did. You said it multiple on multiple videos. You said it. Let, let's let's just let's say I said. It. But no, did no, I just say you did. I did. Okay, where the evidence? Where is the evidence that I'm, that I'm looking called? for? It. Okay, looking for it. who is the who is the police lieutenant? I don't know. You the one spoke to him. I didn't speak to him. Oh no, yeah. You, if, how would you know if I called the police on you? Because so, nigga, you said it. What lieutenant? What police department? Okay, all right, then let's look at it like this. Let's look at it like this. No, no, You no. made the threat. Yes, you sir. said it, right? So what you're saying, this is what I understand you to say. Moderator. What, moderator. You under, what I'm understanding you to say moderator. is. Can I get a moderator? You are a liar. Moderator. And you just talk just to talk. I need a moderator. Is that not what I'm understanding you to say? For the fifth time. What lieutenant, what police department that was used? Who was involved? Did I call Nashville? Did I use St. Louis? Who was the lieutenant? What police department? What is the case number? Why, who, when, and when did they contact you? You told your audience that I called the police and they come to my channel telling me you called, you called the police on him. Well, if I called the police on him, what was the evidence that he's showing you? This is your leader. See, he's trying to get out of Answering the question for the second time. Anything. I what took your word. I took your words for real. See, like when I say something, you take my words for real because I mean what I say. So when you say, "Yeah, I'm gonna call the police on it," I'm taking your words as actual facts. 
And I didn't, I wasn't the only one that took your words as actual facts. Other people said, oh shit, dude, really calling the police on you. Maybe we need to do this or maybe we need to do that. If you don't say it, if you don't say it out your mouth, then there wouldn't be anything for me to say. Well, the eighth I don't go run. Or, go, I'm not a liar. I say you are a liar. Mean. So when I say to you, when I say to you, give me your address and I will come to your house, I meant every word. Or, or the tip time. So when or you say time. to me that not just to me, you're no, saying to the world. He's you're not saying to the world who was calling the police. You told your audience, Angel Snub Nub Seven called. That means that's the that's the after. Called. That's the after effect. I called, not make a threat, not talk about it. I actually called the police. That's what you told them. That's why they took it like that. So and I asked them, where was the evidence? Who did I call? Nashville, St. Louis, uh, Lieutenant Schoenberg. Who did? Who contacted you to let you know that I called the police? You lied to your audience to dramatize, to make me look like some type of bad guy, I did not call the police. I'm not making you look like a bad guy. You're making yourself look like a no, idiot. Simply because, simply because Again. you, and, and what you're doing, you do just like these other people. There when you go. get in trouble with a real person, you there run to go. your master. There we go. You run to your master. There we go. And 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 I'm going to find you. He's not going to ask where you said it because he's going to your master. Oh, Mr. White Man, Maurice is going to beat me up. Can you protect me from Maurice instead of you being a man and just stop attacking Maurice so Maurice wouldn't have a reason to come beat you up? It's like you a man. All you have to do is leave, leave my campaign out of your mouth. Make me. Okay, well, look, this is what I'm going to do, okay? Any video that I see. Especially if it's in the title, because I don't I don't keep up with videos that, that's not in title. Any video that I see of yours talking about you the Mississippi campaign, they're gonna be flagged and removed. See, that's what I'm saying. He's still running to the enemy. He's still running to the enemy. That's right. I, that's I right. Respect that I'm shit. Telling you, and I'm telling you. Also, <laughs> also I'm gonna tell you this. Now okay. this is the big one. This is the big one. Oh, big, boy, big boy, this is the big one. Go ahead, big boy. You have given me enough evidence in mm -hmm. videos. And in Texas, and in text messages, calling me nigga and stuff out of my name, or even in Texas, you know this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do. I'm going to do it just that. Mm -hmm. I am going to. I am going to. You continue to move in a manner using my name, Mississippi campaign. Then I will go to the authorities, and if they charge you with a crime, if they charge you with a crime, you are going to prosecute you to the fullest extent of the law. And look, I will, I will tell everybody I called you a nigga. I ain't scared of you or them. Because you are the white don't, man's don't, nigga. Don't be scared. Why you the white man's jail? nigga. Why you sitting in jail, jail eating your time. Now, the now, the now, the now, the now keep it up. Now keep it up. We should hate you to the core. Good, good. Good, good. That's very nice. You yeah. can say that, say that while you're sitting in jail eating ramen noodles. They ain't gonna sit me in jail. I'll sell it to, to them and to you. Good, you can do that in jail. Because you still an right. Uncle Tom nigga, not an Uncle Tom, you're a Sambo whatever, nigga. Whatever, whatever, sir. Guess yeah. what? When you go to jail, your campaign is over because ain't nobody gonna be able to take your place. Oh, yes, it's gonna move on whether I'm doing nothing. Nigga. You're not have to do nothing. Whether I'm living or dead, it's, going to, it's, going, to, it's going to succeed. Ain't nobody gonna do nothing. Oh yeah, they're not, and they're not, not gonna put nothing. They they're not gonna, like you. They're not gonna put nothing on your commissary either. Oh, when you in jail, like you. Hey, when when you in jail, and, and and them boys looking at your pretty booty walking around that jail cell, you know, yo, all your campaign folks, these faceless trolls, because the majority of them ain't number some damn faceless trolls. They're not going to send you nothing, put nothing on your books while you laying up in jail, trying to be big, bad, and bold, trying to be tough. Look, I've been to jail. I've done ten years. I know how it is laying around in a damn cell, laying around locked up for 10 years. I know what it's about. You want to go to jail on this nonsense? I don't want to do it. But if you want to keep doing what you're doing because you can't compromise and you ain't scared, all scared niggas is in jail or in the ground. Which one do you want? Which one do you want? Don't threaten me. I'm threatening you. I'm telling you. It's a problem. It, then, nigga. It's a problem. Okay, it's done. It's going to be done. You will. <laughs> hey, hey. 
if they take the case, it's out of my hand. Oh, then I gotta be put in motion. That's it then. That's it. You don't need to talk no more. They ain't scared of you or no element of cracker. You know it. I'm glad. You're still gonna be a punk and fired Sambo white loving nigga. I'll be a free man. I'm dead or alive. You still a nigga. Right, absolutely. You're still a white man lover. Right. And you're still a thief. You're a thief. You steal from your brother. Nigga, you ain't got shit to steal. You stole the Mississippi case. You don't even know how to think. The word Mississippi didn't come out your mouth till I gave it to you. Nigga, I just showed you a fucking map. Did you not see Mississippi on the fucking map? I gave you Did the you? word Mississippi. Did I gave you? you the word Mississippi. The word Mississippi ain't even on your channel till I gave it to you. The dumb bitch. You call me, you call me, you call me the dumb dirty bitch. glass. You call me the dirty glass. Why the dirty glass? Right. But you drink it from the dirty glass. Well, I'm not drinking from a dirty glass. Stop, stop using drink from a dirty glass. Well, you the evidence that I showed was very clean. Yeah, you show that you are a thief. thief. Let's make America great. You're a thief. I have yeah, nothing to do with America, America great. You're a thief and a liar. I did not call the police on you. You're a liar. You didn't call the police. You're a liar. You didn't call your lawyer. Fuck you and a liar. not going to stop. Good. I'm glad. Make it easy. Make Good. it easy. Good. I'm in jail, bro. I know how I feel. You don't know. Well, get keep what? going. But you the white man's boy for real. You, really? went the, you went to the army and fought for him. I didn't fight for the white man. I went. I joined the FOI. You joined the white man's army. I stood in front of Farcon willing to take a bullet. How many times did you stand in front of Farrakhan and take a bullet? I dealt with the anti the Jewish Anti-Defamation League. Did you? No. When I was a little boy, I was born in Jim Crow. It was mandatory that you stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance. I'm the only one out of my whole school that said, to hell with that. I'm not standing for a flag that don't stand for me. As a little boy, I've been in this struggle ever since I was a little boy. You don't know nothing about me. I know you scared me. I know I you 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 look, man. Look, look, brother, I, I do not want to hurt enemy. you. Stop, get off your high horse, brother. I you do not want to go this the enemy. I do not want to go this direction. And your people need to stop egging you on because this is that's not good, man. Come on, look. Look, let's just people ain't even egging me on. My they people ain't egging me on. They're not egging me on. They, they, so. look. they didn't even want me to come waste my fucking time here. They wanted to. Because they knew you ain't shit. Right. But you wanted to debate they know you ain't shit. Why you got so angry over it? You came to my channel. Look, when you and God was debating me, I mean, talking about me, I was on that video and I, I was like, let me in. You and him was talking about me like a dog and y'all wouldn't let me in. I don't know nothing about that we wouldn't let you in because trust and believe, if God knew that you wanted to be on, he'd have brought your ass on because he's not afraid of you. Of course not. He's not afraid of you. Of course I'm not. not afraid of you. But again, well, there's nobody but you. But you again, don't want to do that shit. But again, you declined. Please. Then you you declined to, to, to debate for over a month. And I said, I got to the point where I said, the you hell with it. went today. You know, you are the one that got today. angry. That's why you're angry today, because I wouldn't debate you. you I'm not angry. Debate. I'm not angry. Yes, you were. I'm not angry. They're going to get off my page. You told me to get off your page. But guess what? A few minutes that later. That day that I cussed your ass out, right. I was you angry. You was on my page the same damn day. Because you was attacking me on your page again. Why you don't want me on your on your chat, but then you're going to come to my page and start running your mouth? No. That's not okay. fair. It, you, were, you, were, you made a video about me with my fucking name in there. So I went and watched a little, and I typed my little fucking message. Simple as that. Then on my live, while I'm teaching something totally different, you pop up in there and start talking your shit in my chat room, and I got angry, and I went the fuck off. Anybody can go to the, to the video and see what kind of shit I was talking. I wasn't saying nothing to make no, this man angry or nothing like that. You just saw me on there because you was mad because I wouldn't let you on my on my live. You was angry and upset. Mad. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't we can do this. We can do we, we can do this. Look, look. I, let, let's say hold, hold, let's say this. All right. Because I want people to hear what I'm saying. All right. All right. First of all, I'm not like you or some of these other people out here. Okay. I say what I mean. And if I say something that's wrong, I go back and correct it when I say it. Simple as that. I own what I do. 
Simple. I don't say shit that I don't mean. Now, you may be like some of these other people that I found that get on YouTube or get on radio and they just talk shit. They don't mean it, but they just talk it because they want people to pay attention. That is not who I am. That is not what I'm about. I want freedom for my people. So that means that I have to be a person of integrity. So I get up and I live no, the I'm life that I speak cut about. You off. I have to cut you I off. Not, no, you know, no, no, let me finish and I'll no, be no. quiet. You said let you're a finish. person of integrity. Let me finish. I called the police on you. I called the police on you. You're still tap dancing over that issue. Show the people that I called the police on you. Show the evidence. You are a liar. That proves that this man is a liar. I'm not going to let you get out of that, bro. Admit that you lied to the people. You made a video and lied to the people that I called the police because I did not do that. You know I didn't call the police on you. You didn't know. Tell your audience that you did, that I did not call the police on you. No police contacted you. No, Nobody from St. Louis or Nashville Police Department contacted you. Now, if you want to continue to get on your high horse, you will, you will be able to tell them, well, I was picked up by Nashville and my court my court date is February such and such. See, that, now that'd be different. And I said, yeah, that's right. He, he asked for it. And I will admit it. Yeah, you're damn right. I called the police. Nigga, you, you, you already you said it on this thing. Everybody done heard you say it. No, you said I called. C-A-L-L-E-D. That's the after effect. I called the police, meaning I actually do 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 uh, hello? Yes, this is this guy, Maurice uh, Rivers, that he's uh, harassing and bothering me and blah, blah, blah. Uh, Nashville Police Department. Lieutenant who? Lieutenant Sasquatch? Okay. You will contact him? Yes, sir. Oh, well, only thing I, I know he's a druggist. That's, I don't know too much about him. He's a, a part of a hate group, you know, Nation of Islam. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, I would do that. Yeah. But I did not do that. I will do it. I don't have no, I don't have no problems in it. Because it will get you out of my way, It'll get you out of my hair. I don't have to worry about it no more. As long as long as you making claiming to be the Mississippi campaign and you're not, since I'm the dirty glass and I'm so bad, why don't you just say, keep keep doing what you're doing in Mississippi? I don't care. Why don't you become the Maurice Project or something? You know, we doing something in Mississippi. But when you said the Mississippi campaign, people keep messing with me even to this day. Do y'all hate homosexuals? I don't have nothing to do with that. You bringing crap to me. I don't have nothing to do with you bringing homosexuality and, uh, and, and all this stuff. I don't have nothing to do with that. I don't have nothing to do mentioning those things at all, period. I'm not trying to build a nation or a town for myself. I'm not trying to do those different things. Tell your audience, brother, that you lied to them. I did not call the police. Tell them, be honest. But see, I told y'all that's, uh, that's what Nation of Islam people do. Come on, man. Don't be quiet. Show the evidence. Because I did not. Brothers and sisters, I did not call. And I, I, I really would not want to do that unless my hand is forced. You know, this is very simple. This is very simple. And, and you all heard him. You all heard him. Because he wants me out of his hair that he doesn't have. He wants me removed. So if I'm removed, then he thinks... That our vision that I just laid out, our plan that I just laid out is not going to go because I'm taken care of. No. You just heard his whole reason for being. He's jealous. No. He's envious. And in his heart, there's murder for me. That's why he'll go to the enemy, like he just said, and tell him. And that's why I okay. say, don't okay. threaten me. Okay. Do it. So I go to the enemy, right? I go to the enemy. You gonna get in the morning. You gonna go in the. You gonna get up in the morning. Go to the enemy job, right? You gonna spend the enemy money, eat the enemy food. You go to the enemy just like anybody else do. We live in the United States of America of laws. It is against the law to threaten people. It's against the law to go kick somebody's ass in public. It's against the law. Then you don't have your, me, you don't have your nation, sir. Then charge me, nigga. I will. Then do it. Okay, we just done. Y'all see? Y'all see? He asked for it. No problem. Do it Monday, Monday morning. Then do it. Fuck it. Do it now. No, I can't do it. I can't do it. Not Sunday. Sunday is a day of rest. 
<laughs> Sunday is the day of rest, bro. I can't do it on Sunday. Yeah, right. You know, we gonna find. They gonna find out where you, Maurice Rivers live. They are gonna find out where you work, and well, they gonna they're gonna put Maurice Rivers. They're not gonna find me because my name is Maurice Muhammad. Well, Maurice Muhammad Rivers. However, they gonna find they know where on my name. I'm telling they gonna, you, they're gonna know what you look like. Got them because I'm sending all the videos, and they're gonna know what car you drive and everything. So. You know, just do it. You know, I, shit, I want you to do it now. I'm not afraid of them. Bro, I will defeat bro. them just like I will defeat you. I'm, I'm glad. afraid of you. I'm oh, glad you're confident. Good. I'm very confident, nigga. Good. Good. I'm very confident. Make it easy. Yo, most definitely. Bring it. I've been locked up. I know how Bring easy it. I know how easy it's not. Not saying it and do it. Okay, I dare you. you done. I, I doubled it. Y'all said y'all heard it. This liar, because I did not call the police. On this man, I did not call this police on this man. You see, he's still tap dancing and bump I'm dancing. Tap dancing. I'm telling you to do it. I'm no. saying stop threatening me, nigga, and do it. Why don't you why don't you do what you threaten me? You do it. Give me your address and I will whoop I your ass. Damn thing. Oh, that's okay. Then without your address, how can I beat you up? That's stupid. That would be stupid on my part. Because you know I will whoop your ass. Give me your address. Give me your address. What is My it? My address, 2628 Delk Avenue, Nashville, Tennessee, 37208. Delk, D-E-L-T? D-E-L-K. D-E-L-K. Oh, What's that zip code? 37208. Oh, man, it's done. Do it. Do Maurice it. Maurice Rivers? No, it's Maurice Muhammad. Rivers is nowhere on my name. I'm calling you. it. Rivers. Now bring it. Cause you're lying. Because I'm, look, I'm, let me tell y'all something. <laughs> y'all gotta stop being afraid of niggas like him. Oh, yeah. Don't be afraid. We can defeat them. I'm living this shit to defeat him and the enemy. And he's he still no fear in my still heart. In this shit, and he's still in this shit. And he's a liar. Well, we got to see, nigga. Yeah, you are. We got to see. You a thief. You are a thief and a liar. You are a thief and a liar. Got caught up in a lie. You, and we you got to see. Out of combat. We got to you see. Wouldn't be, you wouldn't be nothing without the Mississippi campaign. You a follower of, of Farrakhan, and all his ads fail. Everything that man touched is incompetent, and he's a damn failure. That's why you're looking for something else if to I do. I was such a failure, I wouldn't, be a, I wouldn't be a threat to your punk ass. You are a failure. Such a failure. No, no, no. Yeah, right. You won't, you're not a failure because you taking an idea that didn't come from Farrakhan or nobody. It came from the dirty glass that you call me. You love bathing in dirty, dirty water, don't you, sir? You know why you're jealous of me? I ain't jealous of you. You jealous. stole from me. What the hell? I'm going to be jealous of you. You know why you're jealous? You know, you know why you're jealous? Jealous of you of what? Do, do you know why you're jealous? You don't look better than me. <laughs> you don't look better, than look better than you. I may you not. Me. But do you know why you're jealous? You do is copy people. You're a copycat. You copy you a fire car. You're jealous. You copy me. You're a mimicker. You don't have no thoughts of yourself. You Nothing comes out of your jealous. mouth. You quote from other sources. You don't have no mind of your own, sir. Do you know why you're jealous? I'm not jealous of somebody who's a copycat. Let me tell you why you're jealous. An Arab, an Arab wannabe. Let me tell you why you're jealous. That, that, that makes you. That makes you feel good nobody about it. Right, ain't nobody jealous of you, bro. You Just are. stop using it. And this, this is why you keep doing. the Mississippi campaign out your mouth, and we won't have no problem. That's because it. Because you know. I don't know nothing. Not bring forward what you want. I don't know. You know. I, I, I don't know. I, I just don't. I don't know. I don't know. You know. I know you're a liar. And I will. I know you're a liar. You will bring forward my vision. I know you're a liar with a vision. And you're a liar with a vision. What else you know? You know. I understand you're a liar you with me. You me, got me, because you knew you couldn't do it without me. I don't care nothing about you. You didn't have to join nothing, dude. Then Nobody why did don't you need you. Then why did you come and ask me? I asked everybody. I asked everybody. You needed me. You ain't, you ain't the only you one I asked. ask people you don't need. I asked everybody. You don't ask people you don't need. Right. You don't ask people right. you don't want. You wanted me. And you need it. I wanted everybody that I presented the idea to. I wanted Farrakhan. You know. I you wanted Farrakhan. Do it on I wanted your Farrakhan. Own. You, you ain't about nothing. No, you can't do it on your own. No, I can't. Right. Absolutely exactly. right. But I can't. Can. No, you can't. That's no, you why can't. I didn't. You that's can't do why. nothing on your own. 
No, when no, I started no. the initiative, I never asked you, did I? No. I, I wouldn't want to be part of no initiative. I, you know why I never asked you? Because, because I wouldn't want to be part of an initiative. Because I don't need you. But you're still book dancing and tap dancing. I don't need you. Let's get back to That's tell your real. people. Tell your people that you lied. I don't that need you. Lied on me. And I can I get this shit done without. Yeah, I call the police on you, liar. And that's the truth. Yeah, there's the truth is you're a liar and a thief. You're a liar. You and a thief. It doesn't make it true. It is true. You stole the Mississippi campaign. The Mississippi did not come out of your mouth until you got in me. And I did not call the police you're on you. Envious. You're a liar. You're jealous and you're envious. Right, absolutely. Yeah, because I know. Because you know. Yeah. You're, you're up and paid. A far car, a far car wannabe, I'm jealous of. And yes, you, you are. And you steal my, my concept. I'm jealous of that, right? You are very so, jealous. So I'm jealous of myself, really. I'm jealous of myself. because I am the best of yourself. You, you're, the, you're, the, you're the best of I myself. You represent the best of yourself. Right. Exactly. I represent the best of yourself. And you're a liar. If Tell your people of yourself. But for the twelfth time, thirteenth time, look into your people faces and say, "Look, y'all, he did not call the police on me. I was, you know, I jumped the gun." Uh, th but see, that means you you just admit yourself that you are a liar. You lied to the people. Didn't you? you no, know, a liar. This man is a liar. He steals. He don't have no mind of his own. Everything that come out out of his mouth is Nation of Islam teachings and. Me, anything when he talks about the Mississippi Mississippi campaign, y'all talk about preach, brother, brother Maurice preach. That's me. That's me. He didn't have no idea. He didn't have no idea of this concept. All that comes from me. He didn't come. He didn't come up with that by itself. And Louis Farrakhan, it's Farrakhan and me. It's an honor. Actually, it's an honor. <laughs> it's an honor. He's half Farrakhan, half Angel Snubbed up seven. Farrakhan seven. For I come up, up seven. That's what it is. There you go. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm done. It's getting redundant. I, I can't. I can't. I can't do it no more. He he won't answer the question. He won't admit to the public that he lied on me. You lied on me, bro. I did not call the police. And you know something? I might and I might not call. Who knows? It's according to how I feel. But I know I have the upper hand, so I'm cool. Nigga, you don't have the upper hand. <laughs> I do. I do. You just show before the world what's in your heart. Yeah. Yeah. I know. So everybody knows my bad that. heart. My bad That's heart. I know. I know. I know. Not I know. only I know. Will they continue to say you are cool and a nigga? Yeah. But they will also know that from your heart of heart, you run to the enemy to yeah, try to get the worst for me. Yeah. I yeah. will defeat you and the enemy. Right. So that's why I say, don't threaten me, nigga. Do it. Do it. Nike. Do it. Nike, let's do it. <laughs> you right, sir. Let's do it. Let's now do us now do us a favor. Let's do a, do us a favor and tell your people that you lied on me. I'm not letting you squirm out of this, bro. Tell Did your you people you was calling the police on me. Tell your people that you lied on me. Did you say you was calling the police on me? Did I do it? You did, said did. you say it? Did I? Did you? Did I do it? That's did the question. You say it? You lucky I cannot. Which which channel of yours is that fucking video on so I can find no it? Tell me which channel it is. And I do it. it. That's the question. It's on the Mississippi. You said Angel Snub Nub 7 called C A L L E D. That's the after. Called the police on me. Tell your people that you lied, bro. See, he got caught up in a lie. Well, let me look at the chat room. See if they support him in his lie. He lied, y'all. Oh, I'm he. I'm, I'm displaying mental illness because I caught a liar in the lie. Nigga, that's cool because see that person is a liar too. No, because yeah. you're the one who got on video and said, and you said it on this video. When the Nation of Islam threaten you, you take it serious. So I'm going to run to the police. I'm going to run to the white man, Mr. White Man. That Muhammad nigga, he's making me afraid. Right, absolutely. Because he wants to he wants to build a reality for black people to be successful. Stop him, Mr. White Man. No, no. You made a threat talking about you're gonna beat me up, call my mama a bitch, and all that other stuff. Oh, have you forgotten, sir? Have you forgotten that? That's the reason why. Had nothing to do with you building no damn reality. 
you were talking about, and even said it right now, which which I'm going to use the same information because you were right here saying the same damn thing. The police or whoever would be happy to see that because now it's September the 30th, and the last threat was a few weeks ago, a week a week or so ago. So you're still threatening me. He has a pattern of behavior. If you give me the address, nigga, it ain't got to be no threat. I'm not giving you nothing. Yeah, that's what I thought, because you know I'll show up and whoop your ass. I don't know about all that. I don't yeah, know you do that. know about it. Shit, I gave you my address. Show up on my front door. I don't know about it. I ain't show, no show up on my front door. I have no reason to show see, up at your door. See, if I show up on your front door, and I already said to the world that I'm going to got a Plus, you got a, plus you got a dog. You, up, you got a right to pull out your gun and shoot plus me. Plus, you got a dog. I don't want your dog getting fleas on me. No, I, I, I don't do stuff like that. Look, just admit to your people. That uh, that you lied, bro. You caught in a lie. See, I told y'all about these nations. Even when they caught in a lie, even when they caught in a lie, they would never admit it. We I got the video. Sick, can you be quiet so we can play the video? It ain't gonna tell. It don't. Can you, can you be quiet so we can play the video? Oh, what detective? That's not gonna tell me well, who you I called. Quiet. We're so not gonna. We I don't play the video. Play the video, play the video said, please. I know what I said. I don't want to see no video. Oh, now you don't want to see a video. I did not call the police on you. I don't give a damn what the video said. Cracker lover, play right. the video. You're a cracker lover too. You're going to be on this job early in the morning. You bum. You ain't doing for self. You ain't doing for self. You bought, the, you bought your car from the white man. You eat the white man's food. Your, your boss is probably a homosexual. Your employees that you work with is involved in interracial relationship. You are fake, hypocritical Negro. All right, all right, all right. Let's play the video. I don't know why I have to play no video. You're all a liar. Right. All right, guys. Calm oh, down. Anybody can see you caught up in a lie. You know, you're a liar. Well, and you a don't thief. want that video a liar, played. A liar and a thief. It's not going to prove nothing. I'm you don't want that video played, huh? For what? <laughs> all right. We're going to wrap this up. We're going to wrap this up. We're going to wrap this up. Um, a liar and a thief. It was definitely a good debate. Not um, really. Wait, um, <laughs> real quick or not? Yeah, uh, just I was going to before we before we wrap this up, we definitely going to get a closing statement for uh, both of y'all. So we're going to go with um, Talik. Uh, yeah, Talik, you give a closing statement, and right after you give a closing, and Marish, you give a closing statement. Okay, uh -huh. is there a time limit on it? Is there a time limit or what? Uh, I don't know, three minutes maybe? It shouldn't be that long. What about five minutes a piece? Is that cool with y'all? All right, five minutes. All right. Yeah, okay. Five minutes. okay, hold up. Let me set it. Okay, well. Just a second. Wait, wait, just a second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, let me just set the thing. Okay. I got her. Hold up. <clears throat> I'll let you know. Okay. You're ready, bro. Okay. All right. I mean, so it's perfectly clear that this man stole the idea, the concept of the Mississippi campaign from this platform. There's no doubt about that. He even admit that, okay? So everything about that, all that stuff that y'all talking about, oh, he teaching, he preaching, that's my words. It comes from me. The word Mississippi won't be found nowhere on his page until I introduced it to him. It is not right for you to take that and claim it for yourself and flip it into something that is not. That's just not right. And for those of you sick sucker that is egging this man on, because I guarantee you, when he's sitting around laying in a damn holding cell, you ain't gonna send him, you're not even gonna send him no Roman noodles to eat. I've been locked up for, for 10 years. When the, when, the, when the justice system get involved, there's no holding back. If I decide to make that move, it's out of my hands. And if he wants to be big and bad and, and, and no compromise and stand on here, well, you do that. You'll be doing that, drinking tap water out of a cell. That's what you want to do, then so be it. We just caught him in a lie. He's trying to weasel his way out of the lie. I did not call the police. He made a video, Angel Snub Number 7, called the police on me. I did not do that. 
What police department? What what lieutenant? Who contacted you? Show the text messages. What a what a letter. Show some kind of evidence. He wanted you to think that I actually called the police. Not a threat. Not just talking. I actually done it. But he's trying to pretend like that's not what it's about. No, you telling the people I actually done it when I didn't. Tell the people you lied. It's a lie. And this is the type of people or person that y'all follow, this, this feel-good rhetoric, a liar. This man don't even have a mind of his own. He's half Farrakhan and half me. Farrakhan nup nup seven. That's what he is. If y'all want to follow that, but see, I understand that most of you just like to feel good. A hundred years since Marcus Garvey, this same type of talk, y'all don't have a pot to piss in. And you just ignore it. Oh, we're going to have a nation and we're going to separate. No homosexual. Y'all been saying that for decades. Ain't done nothing yet. Oh, and then Angel Snuffin' Up 7, he's a cool. He's Uncle Tom. Using your masa words. That came from the white man. Profanity, all that stuff come from the white man. And you work the white man's job. You drink the white man's water. You don't, you're not in a position to call nobody nothing when you're living the same way I am. And you will call the police at some point in time also because that's the law. If your ass don't, your ass could be up in a, in a, end up in jail because you living under the white man's law. That's just the reality of it. This ain't no black nation stuff, whatever. Keep, keep doing that in fantasy stuff. Black conscious, black nation of Islam, garbage. That's what it is. I'm sorry, but it's this is garbage. It's fantasy, comic book stuff. You think that you're gonna build a city, and the people are gonna just say, "Oh, Maurice Muhammad is here. We just gonna stop doing what we're doing and do what Maurice Muhammad wants us to do." That ain't how it works. I don't give a damn what plan you got. You did not plan on what the people are gonna do. You can make all the plans that you want to. Some people plan to get married. They don't never get married. They plan to go to the store. Don't never go to the store. You can plan all you want to. The people that's already living there is not going to go for your garbage. You better find your island or go out in a cornfield some damn way. That's what you need to do. But the man caught, was caught up in a lie. He's not original at all. He has no create. He's not creative. He has no imagination. He has to copy people. If it ain't Farrakhan, he's copying me or somebody. There is nothing original coming out of his mind. And with that said, uh, I really didn't like this thing at all, really, because I might have to do something I don't really want to do. But, you know, my mama always said, my mama, who he called a bitch, my mother, who he called a bitch, my mother, my mother said, a hard head make a soft ass. So be it. That's all I can say. Ain't no shame in the game. I don't care. All right. All right. Maurice, you got uh, five minutes to give your closing statement. Um, can we, yeah, I'm here. Can, uh, we play a, can we play a few minutes of the video, please? Okay. All right. Let me see if I have it. Okay, when you're ready, I'll press the button as soon as you start playing it. Okay, you ready? Yes, sir. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another. You really care. There are those of whom you love. They will take advantage of you. They will steal from you. They will lie on you. They would do all types of things to you. And because of love, you will forgive them. And they take your kindness for weakness. Hmm. And because you love and because we understand the I'm going to fast uh, forward. Over condition and okay. then, then why would they steal from you? 
I have been advised not to say no one's name, but I'm very sure those of you who are familiar with the situation, you already know of whom uh, those individual and those groups or whatever they want to call themselves, you know who I'm talking about. You love black people, but you're going to call another soul brother's mother out of her name, and then you're going to tell me I'm sorry. My mother don't accept your damn apology because you don't mean it. All right, let me let me because fast. You're sorry. Let me fast forward. Let me let me see. Okay. I'm not going to allow. We're not going to allow you to take our idea. You didn't come up with nothing. And then spread it around. We'll take your videos down. The law is going to take that, take the Mississippi campaign away from you and bring it back to where it really belongs. And the law, if the law see fit, the law will put your ass in prison or in jail. That's the bottom line. You think this is a game? You think it's funny? And all you suckers that's egging this man on, you're not going to visit him in prison. You're not going to put any money on his commissary. <coughs> you're just going to put your face in his coward ass. Even if you do show your face, you're not going to do nothing for this man. Over what? Do what you want to do. Go create your city, whatever. Just keep Mississippi out of your damn mouth because that's my concept. That's our concept. And I'm going to fight for mine. We're going to fight for ours. You dare respect us. You don't call my mama. My don't make me no difference. Because you will take the Mississippi campaign out of your mouth. You will be shut down. Because that's mine. Well, and you know it's mine. It's ours, rather. The ones who come to this house. You wrong in this. I ain't done a damn thing to you. You wrong. You stole the idea. And you're going to make it into something that is not. The gays and the homosexual. I didn't say nothing about nobody like that. They deserve about soul brothers and sisters. You look it out for yourself in your delusions. And you can you can live in your delusions, but you're not gonna take my idea and make it into, 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 into something that is not. I'm also gonna report your damn group to the southern, what that southern uh, uh poverty, whatever they call itself. You got another hate group, you need to keep your eye on. I don't care. You can call me and say anything that you want to. That don't bother me at all. Okay, you can stop it. As long right. as you keep my name okay. and the Mississippi campaign out of your mouth. Now, not only did he threaten to call the police, he also said he going to call the ABL or the Southern Poverty Law Center, more crackers, Jew crackers, and have us put on the hate watch list. All because I said, we said that we want to build our own reality free of white people, free of swirlers, free of homosexuals. We want to do this ourselves. We want our safe space. So he's going to go and tell his massa because we have determined to be free. So that's why you see a civil war, and that's why you see which way you going to go. You going to go the way of the enemy, or you going to come with us to freedom? All right. All right. Wow. Ah, oh, man, that was, that was intense, boy. Yo, Craig, what is your thoughts? I mean, I really don't want to comment on this. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm trying not to involve myself with this. You know, this is between these two brothers and, you know, it's up for the people to decide in the end. So 
I mean, we got. I, I think we have, we can. I'm not saying I'm not gonna. Well, as of right now, I really. Yeah, don't. I'm not saying who's. I, I'm not going to say, but I just feel like as far as the debate itself, I thought it was like a very intense and interesting uh, debate. You know, I'm not. I'm. I'm. Here, I'm not here to take any sides whatsoever. But um, I think both of the both of these brothers make uh, powerful arguments, in, in my opinion. It's so. intense, but in a sense, it went a little bit too far, and it's almost to an extent become, you know, like a UFC uh, right. match, you know, because the people, you know, you have a lot of people out here that they just want to see a fight. And mm -hmm. so I'm hoping at the end of the day, man, you know, these two brothers can make peace and just go. If, if you two brothers don't work good together, just go your separate ways. Now, mm -hmm. all of this, you know, fighting and, you know, all of that, man, at the end of the day, how does that benefit, you know, Mississippi? So that's all I want to speak on, man. It's just the, you know, the threats and, you know, the fight, you know, the all that, man. You know, that's it, man. That's all I got to say. I, I agree. I agree. But, um, wow, uh, just gonna, I'm just going to get my closing statements real quick. Just want to say thank you all, brothers, for coming on uh, the show. Um, I'm I'm, I'm and uh, I hope y'all brothers definitely work work things out. And uh, and like I said, um, y'all y'all powerful brothers, man. I mean, um, something got to give. Something definitely got to give. But um, but just to end this, um, just want to say thanks for the audience for watching. And um, just want to say peace and love. And uh, until next time. Peace and blessing.